Welcome to Trivial Debates. Welcome, listeners, to another edition of Trivial Debates. I'm Dave Mater. <laughs> With the panelists tonight, we have Jeff Mater back again. The Whoa. man. He's one in he's one in one or one in I'm three? One in two? One in two at this point. One, one in two? three, one in three, yeah. Because you've right. been a moderator on No, oh, yes, that's right. I've been moderated twice. How many have we had? Four? Four. So I've been, I'm one in one. <laughs> one in one. One in one. We got Jody Simpson back again. I'm one in something. Have you won one? Yeah, I won. Yeah, one. you're one in one, probably, right? Yeah, something like that. I think that's right. No, one, one and two, two, I think. He's one and two. And the only undefeated contestant is Kevin Millard back again. Hello? One and oh. He didn't win. I didn't win. He didn't I win didn't at all. Win. Who won I when he was it. here? Oh, fuck. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> the only winless, the only winless contestant, Kevin Millard. You're this fine. is the best part of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's only going to go downhill from here. Your, your, your stock just went down. I was, I was, That's fine. I was That's okay. I, <laughs> Say hello, everyone. And uh, just to uh, make some notes here about the production, if you uh, want to jump out to uh, different battles, make sure you can check out the in the description the time indexes to move to the different rounds because we do hit a lot of different topics on the show. Our iTunes feed is in flux right now. We're looking probably to create a new iTunes feed. It has to do with the fact that we are introducing a new website, which is going to be at TrivialDebates.com. So that will be up in the next few weeks. But until then, um, we will be on YouTube. Now, we were previously on my personal YouTube channel. We have now created a new YouTube channel. Wow, we're moving up. We are. We have a YouTube channel, it's Trivial No Deb- longer can people also see Dave Mater's children. Yeah, no, it's it's better I've separated it. Oh, okay. We've separated the property. Maybe they enjoyed that, though. Maybe, Maybe that was... they want to see me, uh, whatever the fuck's on my YouTube channel. I don't know what's on your YouTube channel. <laughs> so so we, we, we've moved on to bigger and better things. We, we also have a Twitter handle, in case you want to uh, you know interact with us or tag us there. Uh, should, of course, we Twitter. have Facebook and Google+, Plus, and uh, we will have iTunes back in the not too distant future, possibly by the time this goes up. So, we're going to get started tonight, and on to the movie round. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, the question this week is, who is the best comic book villain portrayed on screen? This is only movie related, of course. So, Jeff, you will answer first, and what was your answer for this question? Oh man, my answer was the Joker portrayed by Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. I think this was the best answer you could possibly come up with for this question. That's why I chose it. Um, taking a nod out of uh, Daryl Clark's uh, book, you know, I choose the best. All right, Heath Ledger, first of all, won an Oscar. Second of all, was the best villain. Did he win an Oscar for that one? Yep. He won Best Supporting Actor. No kidding. Yep, was the best villain I think could that has been and will be portrayed on screen. Period. I think I don't think any villain comes close to the Joker and just watchability, sure awesomeness, um, just you 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 hate him but you love him at the same time. And I think that's what you got what you want out of a villain. Heath Ledger took it to a different level, more so than than Jack Nicholson did. I think that's super important to. Uh, you know, to reference here, he kind of went a different way, like, but also kind of stayed true to some of the comics, and you know, you know, gave him no backstory, which is more true to the Joker. Um, you know, he makes up things about why he got the scars. Um, the, the the way that the music was added on certain scenes to yeah, intensify the um, the certain mood that it, you know really needed to be for like the scene where he's uh, talking to Maggie Gyllenhaal's character, um, just. You know the way it was shot. You want to know how he got these scars? Exactly. And he he, he consistently changes it. Uh, and there's a line in the comic books which I use, wish they had used in the film. Uh, in the comic books, he goes, "If uh, if I if I if I have to guess about my uh, you know my origins, I'd like the it to be a multiple choice, right? Kind of thing." He says it funnier in the comic book, but um, I just always thought that was um, so on point with the Joker is that he his origins. Typically, have been kind of shrouded in mystery. He's, he is kind of associated with the Red Hood in the comic books, but he is completely separate from 
everybody else and that you know you have to kind of guess about what his motivations are and yeah. things like that i also like the way uh that the joker just really does a good job of getting to other people in the movie like especially i'll just reference the scene with two-face where he's he, he just sends them over the edge and that's really pure joker and that's why i picked him okay uh jody who's your pick N- not the joker yeah all right <clears throat> so my pick was even though I cannot stand the movies, however, the only shining beacon in the Thor series is Loki. Okay. All right. And in my opinion, I cannot stand the movies. I think they're probably the worst out of the entire Avengers. What do you? Marvel what? Cinematic Universe. Sorry, the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. <laughs> I have to make sure that. we say that because if not, you know, that'll be a problem. You can say MCU if you want. To MCU. MCU? What, that's yeah, like the gangster way. Of you want to be cool? Or? Say MCU. I should get a hat that says that. MCU forever. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so Thor series, of course, the Avengers as well. Um, you know. What what can you say about Loki that he hasn't already done for you? Like he he is essentially mischief. He is mischief put into this. I don't know. I, I what do you want to call it? A great press, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever you want to call into it. Into an olive press. I yeah, something know. like that. You know. But anyway, it, basically, it's it's evil but fun. It's. It's, it's kind of like what I get when I feel when I watch the Joker. It's the same idea. Now, Joker obviously have a more, in my opinion, more psychotic level. Mm-hmm. Um, but Loki is all about making sure that Thor gets is a pain in the ass the entire time. He's always a pain in the ass to him. And he's a pain in the ass to everybody that's around him. He is essentially... He's a dick, but he's just so damn lovable. Like, I don't like... When it comes to the Joker, I didn't really like the Joker as I, I love him. He's you know a fun character. I'm rooting for him, kind of thing. Loki, the entire fucking Thor movies, the entire Avengers. I'm like, yay, fucking Loki. That guy was awesome, man. He was just like Loki's the kind of guy that I'd want to go have a drink with. He's just you know he's dick, but he's so much fun. I guess he's like me, I guess. But <laughs> but you know it's like you know he's. He, he spends most of his time thinking about how he's going to take over Asgard, and then he decides, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just take Earth 2, you know, let's let's fuck up everything, right? So I'd say, I just think he, in the way, um, Tom Hiddleston, now mind you, I don't know how many other people have played Loki, I don't really think most of I don't think was. anybody has I don't really think live played. action one. I think the, cl- the closest to a portrayal of Loki on screen that I can think of is Jim Carrey in The Mask. Because in the movie The Mask, that yeah. the, the the wooden mask he puts on is related to the god. It's that the spirit is, of Loki, or yeah, whatever. spirit of Loki, yeah. yeah, the god of the trickster, the mischief. Yeah, exactly. Thing. So it's like so obviously you can't really compare him. Like for instance, you can compare the Joker to Jack Nicholson's character. You can um, who else has played the Joker? Fuck, there's tons of people that play the Joker, but and then Jared Le- Jared Leto soon. Yeah. Yes, yes, he'll be the next, and we'll see how that goes. I don't know. I still think Heath Ledger probably has done it the best way. I think he's 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 locked it down. And yes, I'm kind of agreeing with you, even though I shouldn't. Uh, but overall, I just think Loki is 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 the villain that everybody wants to cheer for, and I think that's what makes him the best villain. Like he's just in in the comic book villains, it's always about not just how much of a dick they are, but it's also. It's also how much do you enjoy the character at the same time, and I really enjoyed that character. So that's okay. I mean. Okay. Now, just one question: Which, like, because the other two have to kind of pick a specific movie. Oh, okay. And, and Loki's appeared in three movies, both Thor movies and the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. Which one are you sort of champion as his best portrayal? Like, is that like what's the best movie with Loki? Because see, Dark World was pretty good when it came to Loki, but. I also think the Avengers was pretty good too. Like you didn't see much of him, but he's well. He's, he was a, for all intents and purposes, he is the main villain of, of Avengers One. He really is. I wouldn't yeah. say of Dark World. He's the main villain. He's he's the not the main one. villain, but he's, he's like, there. He's, the he's always there. He's always causing shit, and that's really the whole point of Loki. And in the original comic book in the early '60s of the Avengers, it's the, they get together to fight Loki. That was yeah, the first. Yeah. Mission. So I think I'll go with the Avengers. I think okay. the Avengers was probably the most. He was the big closest one. to, and plus the fact that he was also. You know, he was the one that was there, right? He was the big enchilada. He was the big guy. Okay, moving on to Kevin. Who's your pick? All right, I also picked the Joker. Oh. But I picked Cesar Romero, 1966. Oh, Batman. okay. The Batman movie? Let's hear this. Yeah. The oh, Batman movie. This. So, just for the record, all of his television work is discounted. The television work is the same as the movie. He's the same character. Okay. He's 
It's they just exactly shot it. It was longer. Same. Yeah, it was just a longer <laughs> episode. <laughs> it was a big episode. That's all it was. Um, <laughs> I picked Caesar Romero for a lot of the same reasons you did. He has no origin story in in the show and in the movie. Yeah, it's just kind of there. Right? Um, but he has one thing that Heath Ledger doesn't, and that's that he is joyful, joyful mm-hmm. over the chaos that he creates, mm-hmm. and. If you take him outside of a children's show in the 60s and put him in a movie today made for adults, that's truly terrifying. Like, he is truly terrifying just how much he enjoys hurting people. That's true, because if you actually look at... If if he was carried over to a modern stage now, that would be fucking creepy. That's like He's got the wide eyes, and you can't discount the signature Joker laugh is Cesar Rivera. (laughs) It really is. It's like like crazy... Yeah, he wouldn't shave his mustache. He's, he's a Hispanic actor. Right. Yeah, so he and wouldn't so shave he it no matter what. He, he, he also, I mean, Heath Ledger had problems with, with depression after and whatever. Cesar Romero said the same thing. Yeah. He had trouble sleeping after he portrayed this character because was, he was just so Lived psychotic. Yeah. But still had to do that within a children's show. Yeah, because really, well, it's not the that. show. We're, we're specifically talking about 1966 movie. Batman. <laughs> yeah, and he's right. Children, but the Batman children. movie was still and a also movie. In the was Batman, it's a movie. No, it's a movie. In the movie, he shows that he loves the chaos because he also attacks his co-conspirators in the movie. Well, that's my question. And just laughs. God, and I haven't seen loves that so long. <laughs> you, <laughs> that one. That's my question for you. When you picked him, because I was like, it was interesting. We had two Jokers, two yeah. cinematic Jokers. And just to be fair. After I picked Loki and submitted it to him, I went, fuck, I should have picked the Joker. Because the Joker is a good one. <laughs> it would have been you interesting if, one, if you had picked uh, the Jack Nicholson Joker. This would have been yeah. interesting. <laughs> would have been, who's I thought Joker? that might actually happen. I wouldn't have picked the Jack Nicholson Joker, but it, honestly, it would have been a toss-up between those two. Because they are both fantastic for different reasons. Yeah, the wide eyes, the shepherd. There's still no Loki, he's, let's face it. But you know. no. I would disagree kind of with what you're saying about that. Ledger didn't take pleasure in it, in it, like in some of the things he was doing. It's just he didn't show it the same well, way. He was much more dark and brooding, and you right. kind of feel like there is a backstory there, right? But there isn't in the in the movie. In, it's all speculative. In 66. Yeah, it's, it's all not. Speculative. He's just a fucking whack job. Right. Like, but he's it, just in the 1966 movie, he's it's a team up. It's him, yes. the Riddler, Catwoman, and the Penguin. Yeah, but right. then he ends up going after them. He turns on everyone. Yeah, he turns on everybody and fucks just all Just for them. the chaos, just enjoys it. Mm-hmm. Which just reminds me of Loki, who likes Loki to be a good guy, but he likes to fuck around with everybody. Loki is a whiny bitch. Oh, my dad doesn't love He me. is a whiny I bitch, though. Him. I will give you that. I hate him. Yeah. That's true. I will give you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you, think, if you look at the Loki character... He just fucking x me on that one, too, eh? <laughs> on the square sheet, he's like, He is a bitch! I'll give him an X! <laughs> Fuck that Loki guy! He's a bitch! He just x me! Did you see that shit? <laughs> he fucking x me. Well, Unbelievable. He kind of is. Like, he is a bitch. That's true. I mean, he would be a little bit more badass if he just, like, and as a pure villain, if he just did, wasn't whining about his dad and Yodanheim and his brother, who's, oh, they're all like, trying to help him. They're, they're not being He's dicks. the jealous adopted brother. Yeah. yeah. But basically... Uh, but that plays into what he is. That Odin, is what he is, though. He, Odin, yeah, whiny He's bitch. a dick because he's a whiny bitch. Like, that's... No. I don't think a whiny bitch needs to be... I think you should undo the X. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just, anyway. Well, I need an argument. Argument for what? Well, why he's not a whiny bitch. Oh, no, he is a whiny bitch. I'm totally conceding to that. <laughs> okay. He's a whiny bitch, but it works for that character. Yeah, I, if if, I, if, I, if I, these two guys, if these two jokers were whiny bitches... <laughs> It, they wouldn't be nearly as fun, but with, with Loki, him being a whiny bitch is the reason why he's fun in a way. Because that's no. the part that's the part that gives you the, I want to see his ass get kicked, but I also love the fucking guy because he's such a dick and he always causes shit and all that. Yeah, I don't know. No I think it's a nice scale. Me, I just want him to be gone and not in another movie. <laughs> I think the one thing I like about Ledger's Joker really a lot is the fact that he just doesn't care what happens. Like he he's he's going through things. And he just he, doesn't give a shit. He just yeah. doesn't give a shit. Like he'll burn money. He doesn't care. At the end of the movie, when he gets caught, he just laughs in the cops' faces. He knows he's going. Armed. But that was very similar you know, to. That is very similar. That, that is very is, similar to yours because they yours are, is they essentially are, that. People don't think of those two being alike, but they are. They're just, very they're close. They're so yeah. alike. Yeah. But yours is the darker version of that, right? right. Like, it's it, the, the darker version of 
of of the Joker is definitely from you know the uh, the, the rise. Uh, okay, question for all three of you is um, which of these movies is the best? Oh shit! Well, it ain't Batman. No, it's it's not not seven, I can tell you that. It's not sixty six. Batman. I think everyone would agree here. It's probably my movie. <laughs> okay, yes. I would because I, I my question was who is the best comic book villain portrayed on screen, and, and that has to be part of the of the film itself. Like Adam West Batman versus Christian Bale's Batman. I don't know. That's a that's a Christian Bale one. can fucking kiss. I think ass. Christian Bale was a good Bruce Wayne. I think it was a shitty. He Batman. was a great Bruce Wayne. <laughs> oh god, the scary voice. Like, that, that that and Bane. Like that just fucking. Kills oh, the me Bane was terrible. All those fucking. We're, we're not going on that movie. We're still, <laughs> the Dark Knight. Pretty much, I think when that came out, everybody said, "Oh, this is one of the best comic book movies." Dark Knight was a great movie, and the, yes. one of the big. It was a little slow though. The very little Batman. I feel like. There is way Maybe too little Batman, afraid. but that's probably why it was good, because if we had another Batman, we would have wanted to see more Batman. Like, you would have to argue that Heath Ledger steals the show in The Dark Knight. Oh, fuck yeah. It's his, it's his movie. Now, Batman's just in it. Does, <laughs> does Tom Hiddleston um, steal the show in, in The Avengers? Uh, I wouldn't say he steals the show, per se, but I don't think The Avengers would be the same movie without him. I think if you just had some other generic character, like look at the Winter Soldier, for instance, as a good example. Winter Soldier, the 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 villains in the Winter Soldier were not really that. No one gives a shit. Like no one really cares. Like oh, Captain America. Well, you're fucking dealing with the fact that you know you got, you know all you. Oh, you're you're unfrozen. You're in a new fucking time. Big deal. And he didn't fucking time travel. Whoever the one that said that fucking. Uh, What's, was that you? That was you, wasn't it? You're like, oh, fucking Captain America has time travel in it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> well, who was that? Was that you, or was that? No, uh, I don't think Captain America has time travel. Did I say? I never said. We that. said something about science, and it was in one of the other episodes. It's because he, well, he gets frozen. And somebody said, oh, he, he time traveled. No, he didn't. I did. he just, was I it was you? I said that, but I think it's he traveled. Either way, we're getting off. Yeah, he doesn't but. travel through time, but he just, was frozen. So it's yeah. he was frozen. Of, so he's a man out of time. He's a man uh-huh. out of time. That's yeah. a good way of putting it, okay. for sure. But either way, so what I'm what I'm trying to say though is it's it Winter Soldier. No one gave a shit about, but it's the if you look at the Avengers, if you take Loki out of the equation of the Avengers, it, it's it's an alien movie. I, I That's all just, it is. I, well, I would agree with you, but in the third act of the movie. Who gives a shit what happens to Loki? You're just watching them smash aliens. No one really gives well, a fuck what's Lo- happening to Loki. Loki's primary job. But, but some people would tell you that the third act of that fucking movie is probably the worst part of the whole movie. Right. Right. right? So it's, you know, and what happened to happen there? That would have been the fact that Loki wasn't really around in the third act, right? Okay. I'm down between Hiddleston and Hiddleston's Loki and Ledger's Joker. Aww. But I appreciate the Cesar Aww. Romero. I do. The Cesar Romero I thought was a really good fucking answer though. Yeah. That was a really good answer. Uh, just because he doesn't he's he shares he shares his time with the other villains. And that to me that movie is mostly a penguin movie and kind of a catwoman movie. Because there's that whole love story with Catwoman and Batman. But and if you don't have the Joker in it, you don't have the double crossing, you don't have all the extra shit at the end of it. Yeah, but I, that's not the part I really remember about it. Remember when they... Uh, we, we don't have the that part, part I mostly remember about that movie is Batman running around with the bomb yeah. for like an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's going off in 20 seconds. Let's run around for an hour, you know? And he so. keeps running over and then there's like the family of ducks and shit and he can't throw He's it like, down there. He's like, I can't throw it in. Good. <laughs> yeah, million, hundreds of thousands of people, or the fucking family of ducks. Well, yeah, good, good job there, Batman. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so, Ledger's best scene in The Dark Knight. Go. Um, I, I think I will go back to my favorite or best is I guess best best. I would I would still go with that scene he does with uh, Two Face. And just sets him over the edge. At the hospital. At the hospital, where he's like, uh, you know, chaos. It's a little bit like gravity. It just needs a little push. You know? And just the way he does it. There were some cool lines in that, for sure. And and he's working them. He's just working. See, if I was going to pick a scene in that movie, it would be the table scene. It would be him sitting at the table... I can't the remember exactly. One where he he's walks like, up. And yeah, he walks up and he's just talking to the the whole gang members all around. What the do you say? You want to see a magic trick? Yeah, and you want to see a magic trick? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the like when the movie first came out. That was the scene that everyone went because it's the first time you see Joker. It is. And yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's the intro. Going, yeah. Whoa! Like this is no. You see him in the in the bank robbery. Well, you yeah. see him in the bank robbery, but you don't really get anything to do with him. He's just kind of there, and yeah, he shoots somebody, and then he you know he jumps into the fucking bus. I and, only believe whatever doesn't kill you makes you stranger or whatever. Yeah. Right. He says like one. Line, he says kind of dumb shit at the beginning. I wouldn't pick the the, the scene with uh, with the table and with all the gangsters sitting around is because it's um, 
it's it's kind of just like here I am, you know, kind of a scene. Whereas yeah. I really like that one with Two Face because he really just kind of you see him set him over the edge, but he also gets Two Face to like him. Gordon, yeah. Gordon you know? had plans, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the mayor he had plans. They're, like schemers. They're schemers. They're schemers. They're schemers. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do with it if I caught it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Good point. Okay, uh, Loki's best scene. Uh, his introduction scene in the uh, the intro where they're at Shield, he shows up through the whatever the fuck they call that thing, uh, the helicarrier. The no. Oh, in the very very beginning. At the very beginning, where he first shows up and he he takes the um, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Oh, the tesseract. Tesseract, yeah. So he shows up there and he's just got you know, he's got the big fucking you know staff thing that he's carrying around. And he's right. just like he's given like the mind control staff. Yeah, and he he takes over uh, what's his Hawkeye. name? Hawkeye. Well, he takes over Hawkeye after, but he takes over the, the oh, doctor uh, first. Right, uh, uh, Selvig. Selvig, yeah. Sure. So. You know, and it just, it's the whole demeanor. Like, the entire time he's walking around, he's just, it's its a nonchalant kind of thing, and he just kind of looks over. Like, every time, like, somebody's giving him shit about something, he just kind of looks over like, the fuck are you to tell me? Like, I'm a fucking god, dude. Like, you know, and he just, it, very little is said through the scene, but you're... The entire time, you're just like, wow, that guy's a fucking badass. Like, it's like, you know, he was kind of more of a jokey jokey in the in the previous installations. But the that that particular scene, you're, you're just kind of like, wow, like he, he's he's in fucking charge. Like, that's all there is to it. He's fucking there and he's done. Like, that's just what it is. So he, he takes over that scene. He just kind of takes over. And from there, it's just it's it's a train wreck for everybody involved. It's mm-hmm. just he's. He's not even in like three quarters of the movie, but when he is there, he's always commanding that. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just I think like, it was very poor. At the end of that scene, they shoot Nick Fury, and then they just walk right by him. They're like, "Ah, yeah. fuck him." You say, oh, well, maybe he was wearing a bulletproof vest. I don't give a shit." <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's more of the storytellers in the direction more than anything. I don't think that has anything to do with Loki. I, Loki I, I is just kind of like, "Yeah, whatever, whatever." You know? Why? Why? Is because there... he doesn't value the life. He doesn't give a shit. He's like, I'm there to cause shit and like take over. I'm gonna take back Asgard. Yeah, I'm gonna take back fucking. I'm Asgard gonna show and... my dad. I because was my right. dad doesn't. My dad me. doesn't help me. <laughs> but yeah, he's your dad. Yeah, <laughs> he's your dad, not mine. You know that kind of thing. But you know, he's there to cause shit. He's there to be. He's there to make a point. And the point is, I'm in fucking charge. It's that simple. So he 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 elevates as that. As long as my daddy says. So. Yeah. Well, within <laughs> reason. Okay. <laughs> I um. I'm gonna uh, call it. I'm giving the point to Jeff. Oh. Fuck you, Jeff. Hey. Jeff. Uh, Heath Ledger and the Joker wins. <laughs> that was a good. He had good. he has an Oscar. I uh, picked third on that one. By yeah. Way, so. Yeah, you did actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you all, I won the point. <laughs> okay, moving to TV. Ding, ding, ding. The question uh, for the television round is Who is the greatest talk show host of all time? Oh, bar none. This okay, is, we're gonna, done, deal, boys. We're going to start with Jody on this one. Can't stand her. Oprah Winfrey. Fuck, that's the one that would beat me. <laughs> Oprah fucking Winfrey. Why Oprah? She is a fucking media empire. There is nothing that this woman hasn't. Hasn't taken over from her fucking talk show, plain and simple. Yeah, she was in she was in movies and stuff as well. She started as a local uh, talk show on a failing talk show. Wasn't she a news anchor or something? She was a news yeah. anchor at one point as well too. Um, she was given a talk show on the same channel that was failing and it was about to be canceled anyway. And they're like, ah, oh, fucking give it to the black chick, she'll do it, right? And you know, no offense to anybody, but um, you know, they gave it to her. She she turned it completely around. She was then given uh, an option of her own show. They moved Phil Donahue, which was essentially the biggest talk show guy in the world at the time. They actually moved his time slots. They were so worried about this woman. And she dominated the Empire. Like she she's she is the Darth fucking Vader of 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 talk shows. She's I'm sure worth, she would enjoy that she's worth, as well. Yeah, she probably would. <laughs> I'm not as as a person, I don't really care for her. Okay, and it, it's not a racial thing. And that's not really the question if you like It me. has nothing to do with me liking the, the, the person. Um, she's got her own fucking... Sh- uh, she's got her own television station, which basically runs modified versions of talk shows for her. Um, she, she, she owns basically media at this point like she is she is as big as fox for instance like it's she's got i can't remember what her entire value is i tried to get it before i caught here and i could not find it a fuck ton it's yeah it's like (laughs) they're like we ran out of fucking zeros like it's just it's that much she owns uh she now owns uh, a lot of movie empire as well she has her own studio because of it um she has her own television channel now as well which is 
god awful, and I don't know why anybody would watch it. But even still, she's making money. It's that simple, and she is she is the person who, in my opinion, from '86 on, has dominated. She doesn't do this show anymore. Her show's ended now. She actually still does shows, but not in the same way. Okay. She does private shows where it's more like a one-on-one kind of thing. So they've taken the audience out of the equation. Mm-hmm. But once in a while, the audience is there. But it's not sort the same. It's Walters not like the style. open. Yeah, it's like a Barbara Walters yeah. type style. where well, it's like, She used to give out the prizes and stuff. Yeah, she doesn't do that anymore. But let's face it. What other talk show host has given out a bunch of cards and then everybody had to pay taxes on How them? How many talk show hosts are, <laughs> are billionaires, I guess? Well, exactly. And it's it's that simple. Like, you know, Sally Jesse Raphael was big as well. Nothing close to Oprah Winfrey. Or, uh, well, and I'll tell you right now, these two cannot compare to Oprah Obama's Winfrey. success was a lo- very much attributed, like his campaign, Absolutely. based yeah. on her endorsement. She can not only, not only does she rule the media empire, she also can dictate fucking politics. Like, this woman can control everything, and it's kind of scary, actually, but that is what it is, and you want what the best talk show host is, and that is fucking it. I am done, boys. Don't even come back to me for a rebuttal. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Kevin. All right, I'm going to have a hard time uh, arguing mine, because I never used to watch him, but I picked Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson was awesome, though. Yeah, he's one of the legends. I was watching some clips today. Yeah, he was pretty funny. He's a little bit awesome. before all of our He time. was awesome. Yeah. But, uh, you know, king of late night for 30 years. Yep. Everyone watched The Tonight Show. I mean, it, I mean, The Tonight Show survived Jay Leno because yeah. of the and legacy let's face it, Carson if it should have, left. If it should have been buried, it should um, have been with Jay Leno. The reason, <laughs> I picked, the reason I picked him, even having not watched him, was what I hear about him. I listened to podcasts with comedians and stuff, and he was the kingmaker. If you got on his show, yeah. it, that wasn't enough. He had to accept you, mm-hmm. yeah. and then your career was. And made if you had, and if comedian. you had an endorsement from him, right? If you he were, asked you, you were to come set. and sit on the couch with him after your bid, after a comedian's bid, right. then you were your done. career. You, were you you had a career. If you uh, didn't, he launched a whole uh, then you didn't. Yeah. Right, and that's that's why I picked him. It's the only. Uh, I will concede that that's a close second, but he had not a, Oprah. You know, okay. he, had, he had a very disarming <laughs> um, interview style. Mm-hmm. Uh, people love to open up to him. Stars love to open up to him. Stars clamored to get on that show, and now they seem to kind of shy away. Well, there's more competition. He used to be in his era. He was the only one, right? He, but he was one. He was one of the first to be able to have control over his own show on a network and the show that went on after him. True. And David Letterman, for many of those years, was his. His number two, yeah. Yeah, his yeah, number, number two. two yeah. And he had, well, he had Ed McMahon, I guess, on is his sidekick. Okay. All right. So, um, thank you. Johnny Carson. All right, Jeff, what do we got Jeff's on? like, uh, I'm fucked. Who's, who's your choice? I don't think so. I went a different way, though. All right. Let's hear it. I went with Bill Maher. Bill Maher. All right. Okay. Oh, excellent. The reason why, the reason why I, I didn't want I, It's a good answer, anyway. Yeah, let's hear it. Well, I, I went with what the question said, which is, who is the best? And the way I define best is... Who is good at doing talk shows and asking questions that are worth listening to? I find with both of your answers, they ask they ask questions that are just like, "Hey, what are you doing this week? What kind of car are you driving?" Like, you know, or especially with Carson. With Oprah, it was more like, I don't know, I don't like Oprah as far as like you watch that interview she did with Lance Armstrong. It it, it just I think I feel like she caters to her to her um, the person she's interviewing way too much. Whereas Bill Maher. He brings people on his show, and they actually have intelligent debate about what is going on. You fucking asked me again, didn't you? <laughs> well, he, 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 he... Every time you ask me, I'm going to punch you, okay? I'm telling you right now, stop asking me. <laughs> he made a point against you. I know, I'm just kidding. What I'm trying to say is, with, with Bill Maher, okay, well, his show is Real Time with Bill Maher. He started with Politically Incorrect, but then he went, went with Real Time Bill Maher, which is very um, similar, but what he does is he does not monologue at first, then he does a private interview, mm-hmm. and then he goes to a panel. Now the panel and the private interview are really where I think he excels. You really, you know, he really gets to dive in more than you would on just a two, three minute interview. He spends time, and you really get to enjoy an interview. Whereas with, especially Carson and Oprah, you know, she's doing a whole and he and Carson. They're just the time restriction is more, and they don't really get as much out. And it's again the subject matter isn't as intense. Where I. I go to watch an interview to learn something, whereas with Oprah and Carson, I'm I'm just not learning the same quality of stuff. Uh, it's there for entertainment. It's for entertainment. Yeah. Whereas I find with talk show, 
like just like with radio or you know, I want to learn, you know. So I picked Bill Maher for that reason. You want to think? I want to think. And whatever, you know, every week, I think right now the most popular talk shows for that kind of thing are, you know, The Daily Show, um, you know, uh, Real Time. Like the, those shows are going up and up in, 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 in just value as far as what people want to listen to because they want to learn something. Um, What's that? I'm getting radio signals. Radio? Yeah. On that or in your hand? It's probably, it's, it's it's probably, probably the cell phone. <laughs> yeah. I was looking something up. I was checking our Twitter. So weird, I was checking our Twitter feed to see if anybody was uh, tweeting us. No, yeah. Uh, turns out nobody. <laughs> both the Carson and Bill Maher, they're both comedians, and they were both, um, you know, really good at entertaining the audience. I think Oprah, you know, she might be, um, you know, media giant, but I don't think that's what's important. Is talking about what's the best. That's like the most, you know successful maybe or most made the most money but i don't think it has anything to do with what makes you the best at it you don't think success has anything to do with being the best i don't think i said the question is the greatest (laughs) well then you're definitely wrong anyway go ahead okay um what's the most iconic moment of of your talk show host like when you think what's the first thing that pops in your head of their legacy so in the case of bill murray still going but he had politically incorrect before this so we're kind of judging both shows uh, yeah we have two shows that are done now yeah essentially and then we have and we have real time as well real time is still around yeah yeah. sure okay so you think oprah what do you think i think the tom cruise interview (laughs) okay Okay. because oprah managed to show us how fucking batshit crazy tom cruise really is like he, they let that fucking air, well, that which was, was yeah. Like he's fucking jumping around like a fucking circus monkey. Like the fucking guy is completely out of it. Like he is, you right then and there. Everybody in the world went, wait a second. Tom Cruise is not fucking normal. This guy is fucking crazy, crazy, crazy. That changed his career quite a bit. Changed his career, but I think it also changed her career too because the amount of. The amount of view that she probably got off of that, you know, if we lived in today's day and age where, you know, that was a YouTube clip, uh, you know, a nice and proper YouTube clip, that would have fucking blew it away. But I just think overall, like, you know, the it's really hard to say because Oprah has done so many, like, she's, she's had everybody under the fucking sun on her show because of the legacy and the long time that she ran, right? You know, Bill Maher is obviously more of a political uh, political satirist, mm-hmm. you know, so it is going to be kind of more to those points. And, you know, I still agree. I love the show. But well, uh, Oprah, yeah, she was an interesting one because she did serious shows and then she yeah. did these really goofy, campy episodes. But that's what it was. It was entertainment. It was not just entertainment, but it was educational as well. Like, look at Dr. Oz. Like, fucking that guy would be... You know, which I can't stand personally, but launched his career, launched all the careers of all those fucking doctors as well. Dr. Phil. Yeah, Dr. Phil. Those same shows thing. are terrible. They and are she, terrible. And, and she, she this launched. This is true. She launched careers, but bad careers and shit daytime TV that no one wants to watch. That's all yeah, right. but Bill Maher puts fucking Jereen Garofalo on a fucking panel every so often. How is that any fucking better? Well, you got to hear all sides. Okay. Oh, we're sides of what? <laughs> Kevin, Johnny Carson, what do you think of? I have no idea. I never watched the show when I was I'm like, too like, like I, well, young for the show. It was ending but, when we were kids. Absolutely. Um, well, no, no, actually. It was ending prior to that. <laughs> it was, no, it was uh, 92. Nice. It was, was it, it was 92? 92. Really? Right. Yeah. So I was like. See, I thought it was like mid 80s. Yeah, no, no, he did. I didn't watch a lot of 92 to 92. I've seen a lot of the clips, though, on YouTube and shit. Like, some um, of the interviews are incredible. The, the only thing I think when I think Johnny Carson is how many careers that he launched. And all the comedians that I do hear talk about how that was how they knew they'd made it is when Johnny Carson... But being a good, the couch. greatest talk show host, does that have anything to do with launching careers? That I guess in a way it does. Being, yeah, being, because I... Well, I just argued that Oprah. Yeah, I made a point for Oprah. If, a point if for you Oprah, have to point. be a talk show host, people need to trust you. True. And... If you're saying... Hey, there ain't nobody more trusted than fucking Oprah Winfrey. She managed to get a president elected. Very true. uh, This is why I thought... (laughs) Hey, I got a fucking check mark for that! I don't think they do need to be trusted. I think, you know, with certain people you come onto a show, if you don't know your stuff, like, they can ridicule you. you know? What do you think like, of Bill Maher? What's the well, most you're not trusted by the people on the show. Trusted by the audience. Well, okay. Yeah, it's true. It's trusted by the audience. That's what I mean. Trusted by the audience. That's different. 
That's their fault. And that's that's how you know. Like, and John there is Carson nobody more loyal the than the Oprah fans. Because all these careers were launched. On like, his there's a fucking channel now. Like, there's a channel for Oprah because obviously there's people that trust this woman. Okay. I don't know why. What's your moment for Bill Maher? Okay, my moment is, um, I think it was in 2004, 2005, whenever Katrina happened. I forget exactly what year. 2004. 2004. Yeah, I think. Um, George George Carlin was on. And George Carlin, he was on with a uh, Republican, I think, congressman at the time. And they were talking about race in America. And they were talking a lot about... um, you know what was going on with the loot, the looting, and you know the Republican guy was just going on and on about how, you know, there's a problem with you know poor black people in the country, and George Carlin started talking about the owners of the country, and he started basically telling him everything you're saying is bullshit and stop lying and stop making excuses, and you know he started getting interrupted. George Carlin said like, hey, learn a little something, and this is, to me this is what I think of when I think of it because. That's what I do when I go to watch a good talk show is I want to learn a little something, so I go back to that point again. Okay. So Carlin was actually telling him, like, shut the fuck up, Bill, and this Pretty is much. how it is? Not Bill. Another Republican. Uh, another uh, another Republican. Republican. Okay. Congressman. But Carlin, I just wanted to be clear Carlin on that because it that. sounded like you were saying that. Carlin did that. That's the, now, I mean, fair enough. But I think at the same time, uh, it's a talk show, and it's Bill Maher's platform. And the format he created... The format he created in the platform, the, the ability to speak freely on a show where it's almost like this, where it's a debate, it's a mm-hmm. it's a free speak, you know, you kind of have to wait your turn, but at the same time, there's there's allowed for banter back and forth. Yep. And I well, think, we do it all the time. Right. And I think that's what but, makes a good... But that's, but that's, I think, the reason why Oprah is the greatest is because <clears throat> you have Oprah who has jumped through all those different things. She dealt with political issues. She dealt with, like, abuse issues. She dealt with, like... Fucking just, you know, crappy little entertainment issues. You know, here's the launch of a movie. Let's have the special of all the people on it, you know. So it jumped all over the place. Whereas Carson was more all about the entertainment industry for the most part, let's mm-hmm. face it. You know, obviously he did jokes about news and shit like that too. And Bill Maher is on the other spectrum where it's essentially just all political for the most part. Like, really, there's not much. Like, obviously current events and stuff like that. But and the monologue will cover that. Monologue, of course. Yeah, absolutely. So... Okay. So I just I think, think Oprah I, has the, the bigger variety. I think I have what I need. All right. I'm going to call it. Yep. I'm awarding the point to Jody. Hell yeah. And, uh, and Oprah. I can't believe I'm giving it to Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Winfrey. That's what I thought. <laughs> the first thing I thought is, fuck, I should have picked Oprah. <laughs> um, I picked Oprah and I can't. I don't stand Oprah. We all hate Oprah. Oprah. Uh, so so I it. certainly fucking hate Oprah. Yeah. I oh, love yeah. Bill Maher. Yeah. Like, Bill Maher is never, I never stuff. miss. He's a good guy. But you know, Jody, you made it. You, you did a good job arguing it. I got two X's though. You did, but you made more points than you got X's. Oh, so. Jeff got two X's too, though. Yeah, uh, we're on the same page. Jeff. Remember, snipe each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that's, that's what I've been trying to do. On to the music round. Ding ding ding. Our question is: yeah. Who? <laughs> Is or was the best male rock vocalist? Could be current, could be uh, distant past, doesn't really matter. So, uh, going first for this round is Kevin. All right, I picked Maynard James Keenan of Tool and Perfect Circle. I had to do some research here. I didn't know this person. Well, of course not, because <laughs> if it isn't on vinyl, you don't fucking know what it is. All right, well, I'm dead. Uh, no, you're not dead. <laughs> All right, I did my research. I found out who this was. Bill Hicks what, I, what I like about about uh, about Maynard is that his songs are full of emotion, and it's it it comes through even if you don't understand exactly what the song is about. You feel like it's important, mm-hmm. and it really invokes those feelings. Um, I mean, he does. He um, it was he came along in a time too, like he upon me as a as a kid um when everything was just anger it was just screaming and yelling like nine inch nails was a lot of screaming mm-hmm. and it's kind of like well we get it we, we get it you're, you're angry and you're yelling teenage we angst it. yes the, yeah. the teenage angst yeah. and maynard had that a little bit but it was it was more more cerebral more contemplative and you really felt like he was trying to evoke emotion in, in you. And he also, in his songs, took took things to sort of a different level, vocals-wise. He wrote a song, Lateralis, that where all the syllables follow the Fibonacci sequence. Mm-hmm. That shows that he's taken things to just a new level, just thinking about things in a new way. Um, 
there's there's a song on um, anemia, and I can't remember the name of it because it's in German, but it's a oh, I know which one. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the 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 song that's it's it's in German and it sounds exactly it's like, like one of track. Hitler's speeches. Yeah. Okay. But it's just a recipe. Yeah. That's in German. But he's recorded but he, the it way in a way that it sounds it, like it's it a dictator. Sounds, it yeah. sounds like a dictator, and you feel that emotion. You feel kind of yeah, what? You feel angry in a way. Yes, yeah. yes. And all it is is a recipe. I'm not I'm kind I'm of, helping and him. And it, and it kind so of, you're a fan, I'm guessing? And yes, it kind yeah. of shows that how easily we're I'm actually a little pissed by, off. I didn't by pick more that mechanics word, rather than, than words okay. and emotion. Okay, and okay. Thank you. Uh, moving to Jeff. It's gonna be Pink Floyd. No, I picked <laughs> that guy again. <laughs> that guy. I picked Robert Plant. Hey, that that's Robert. a good pick. I picked of Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. I also did research on him. Okay. And I listened to a full hour of both of these guys just so I could okay. make an. And then you put the Brown album back in, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. You're like, this isn't a fucking Brown album. <laughs> Okay, I picked Robert Plant because he was one of the first guys to really use his vo- voice as like an instrument, like with all, in harmony with instruments being played. He used his voice. He would you know go to different levels with it. He would use it to make it almost sound bad, in in the hopes of making it really sound good, and you almost always pay off. Actually, most of the time it did. Um, he would you know most of the time use his voice to just almost sound like a girl and it still came off masculine and awesome this guy was you know in a band uh, with you know three guys who mastered their instruments he mastered his and you know you everyone knows stairway to heaven not just for the guitar solo but for the vocals that you know that i know it because of wayne's world no, i'm just kidding so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, i saying wayne's world they just play the, the riff they just um, play the riff yeah yeah, you know, the other reason I picked him was, you Point know, design. just the range, you know, the way he went from blues to rock to, you know, they could do an acoustic song and he could carry the song. Um, the guy, you know, w- w- just ha- has a legacy of just being one of the best rock vocalists of all time. He's rated number 15 on Rolling Stone's best vocalist of all time, not even rock vocalist. So, yeah, I, I picked him because he's, he's one, of the, one of the first to really use it as an instrument and really use it well and with a band and so you asked rock vocalist I gave you what I thought so okay Jody now somebody I do know oh man that's not good news for me <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna bother to say his real name I'll just go by his oh, stage you, name you, you sent me his real name I, I was like who the fuck's that name. and then I, I read the brackets yes yeah I won't bother to even attempt to terribly pronounce his real name his stage name is Freddie Mercury all right, of obviously Queen. Um, there isn't anybody who's sitting at this table right now who hasn't enjoyed a song that that man has sung. Okay, plain and simple. At least one? Uh, well, maybe you only one, but the rest of us sitting here... I love Freddie Mercury. All right, so. all right, all right. <laughs> that's good. Well, again, okay. that probably doesn't help me. No. Uh, you, y- you have... <laughs> He was a great songwriter. He composed a lot of uh, Queen's top hits, obviously. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, speaking of Wayne's World, there you go. Got Wayne's World in there still. Don't point at the sign. Uh, <laughs> no tool in Wayne's World. Yeah, no tool in Wayne's World. <laughs> so maybe that, should, that maybe that should actually be a rank out for him because it wasn't featured in Wayne's World, therefore <laughs> you're out. Okay. Um, you know, you have you know Killer Queen, um, you know, Don't Stop Me Now, the pinnacle driving song. You know, <laughs> Top Gear rated that the pinnacle driving song. Okay, and you know, even though that's not going to happen much anymore, um, crazy little thing called Love. Of course, we are champions. The nice thing about all of the the stuff that he composed and sung was the fact that um, it all does for that for that decade in music. It is still a variety, which. There wasn't a lot of variety back then. It was all when you had a band, they played the same shit over and over and over again. I felt that if you look at Queen's, even if you look at Queen's greatest hits, like the the CD greatest hits, the two CD pick, um, everything jumps around. It's not just like one type of song, like a rock ballad all the time. Like it, there's 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 stuff where it's just kind of campy. There's stuff that's fucking off the wall. Like no one really understands Bohemian Rhapsody for the most part. Let's face it. Okay, we know it's essentially about killing a guy and all that shit. But it, yeah, you know, it, it actually it's probably they should have called it Loki's song right? <laughs> because there is a lot of whining in that song, I guess. But um, 
Yeah, but you don't mind at the same time. Loki had a theme song and beat (laughs) you. Okay, I'm over Loki, guys. I still stand by it, but I'm over it. Uh, But, you know, you have, like, Don't Stop Me Now, which is kind of a little bit more upbeat, you know, kind of a more positive song. And then you have the next song, which is, like, a downbeat kind of of tune. Uh, The fact that he can compose the music, he not only wrote music... He also um, did a lot of the actual like uh, composition of the music as well, uh, and of course sung it. So um, he also had a solo career as well, a bit not so good. <laughs> so I will concede to that. I'm talking Freddie Mercury Queen, not Freddie Mercury solo. Okay, so okay. Um, just to be clear, but well, we're, yeah, we're discussing as a vocalist. What, is, a vo- what does that really mean? Yeah. You know, and um, you can talk about the songs, but it's not necessarily most well-rounded vocalist or anything. Yeah. I think he can jump around, though. You can, you can, and I kind of agree with uh, the same thing with um, the dude from Tool, which I can never remember his name. But anyway, Maynard James. Maynard, Maynard James. I, I always get it up, backwards. I always get it backwards. I, I always looked, think it's Maynard. When I looked at Maynard, it was him with Tori Amos at a piano. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was... <laughs> Uh, you know, he doesn't even sing for a lot of it. It's just him kind of sitting there. Have you looked up? Uh, have you looked on YouTube recently for Johnny Cash? Um, Do you know what the highest rated Johnny Cash video is right now? No, it's Hurt. Is it? Yeah, yeah. which is obviously a cover of Nine uh, yeah. Inch Nails. Right? I like Rusty Cage better. I don't. Rusty like Cage Hurt. is a great. He does song. his his that is a version awesome of Rusty version Cage. Of that song. Is but awesome. even and you know what? I probably should have picked him. But anyway, uh, Freddie Mercury overall, though I thought was a well rounded. Uh, even though you claim that that's not a good thing. Well, I think well, uh, I, when I talk about well rounded, what I what I meant in reference to that was he doesn't even have to be a, the composer or anything like. No, that. No, but I think that also attributes to the emotion of the songs. Like yeah. when, when I when I hear "Don't Stop Me Now," like in my car, you know, I fucking want to I want to race. You know, it's like he he throws down that whole kind of like. Almost like an angst, I guess, in a way. But it's it's like that. And then you have Bohemian Rhapsody, where you really like feel for you. You really feel for the vocalist. You're like the dude's going through some hard times. Like it's mm-hmm. so he can portray those emotions, which I think is what really is important about the whole being a great a, a great vocalist. Okay, so if you if you had one song to champion Freddie Mercury with, it wouldn't be We Are the Champions. I can tell you that. Okay, um, where you're like this is his best. When you example, go for emotion, his best example of vocal excellence. Vocal excellence. Okay, yeah, that's a good way to debate this. Oh, uh, shit, I don't know. Um, somebody to love is pretty good, I think. Uh, that's a good so, one. Anybody find me somebody to love? Yeah, that's that's pretty good when it comes to vocal. Bicycle? Not bicycle. <laughs> bicycle is like the heroin song. It's like, wow, dude, seriously? <laughs> wow. But, you know, I think, yeah. Somehow that. But Human Rhapsody definitely too. had something to it, too. But, I, yeah. Somebody to love, I think it's somebody to love. Yeah, okay. I think that's probably going to be your better. And one. I don't like. I meant it doesn't necessarily. I, I if there's a song you can pick that I would know from Tool. Well, the only song that you might know from Tool is probably Sober. Okay, how's that go? That was on the Resident okay. Evil soundtrack, <laughs> wasn't it? I don't know it. No, I don't think. so. Oh no, that was perfect. But was it's not. It's not the best. The best is probably Undertow. Undertow is great. Yeah. Undertow is a that's great, great song. song. Okay, and why is it good? Because it's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> if you hadn't noticed, that's just Kevin's answer way, for almost everything. Because it's way, fucking no, awesome, it's Dave. The way that it's, the, it's hard to explain music to someone who hasn't heard the song that yeah, you're, I know. you're talking about. Right? Right. Like, is it got great range? Technically it's, speaking, it's, what it, can you give he, me? He, it's the way the words fit in with the music. It's just a non-stop sort of ride. It never lets you go. Like you, It's just... Okay. Uh, it's you gotta hear it. <laughs> we, we can it's pull it on. Ever we can pull it up on a phone if we need to. Uh, all right, Jeff, what's your song? How are you gonna champion Robert uh, Plant? Okay, that's um, okay. The way I would do that is probably. I mean, I would have a couple songs because, like I said, like with Robert Plant, he's a guy who used his voice in different ways. So like he wouldn't just sing like a song like you know phonetically or like he would go like he would do different things where he go. You know, just do like stuff. That's like Freddie that. Mercury to <laughs> to a T, dude. Yeah. No, no, he would. Are you sure you don't have my answer? No, uh. I think we uh, both have guys though that definitely uh, use their voice in a more um, untraditional sense. I think Freddie Mercury is more traditional, but I think Robert Plant, you know, because since he's playing with a blues band that was um, really kick ass, but also what was experimental, he could be experimental with his voice. It wasn't just. Uh, you know, sing the song, you know, uh, a very simple, normal way. It was He would 
you know, use it, like I said, as a voice. You making certain sounds that aren't necessarily words. But you really give me an answer. <laughs> what, like, what's the song? What's the song? That's because okay. he's dancing around the issue. I would say Dazed and Confused. I would, say, uh, but I would also, you know, go for something like Tangerine, which is more along the lines of um, just a normal song. But I think so. Uh, like I said, he he could do. He had a wide range too, just like Freddie Mercury. Reason again why I picked him was. He, it's just not, I wanted to go a different way, but I also wanted to champion someone that really was revolutionary for playing with a band, using his voice with a band. And you said, great rock vocalist. I think of rock, I think of a band, and I think of a vocalist that went a certain way as far as really using his voice in a revolutionary sense. So, Okay. Does his band contribute to his vocals, though? Does his band... Yeah, do you think his band contributes to the vocals? Like, if I replace his band with another band behind him, is he the same, or is he different? Oh, he's... No, it's not, it's not Led Zeppelin. It's not... Obviously not. Without him... Led Maynard Zeppelin. is. Perfect circle. <clears throat> Absolutely. And that's Maynard, where I'm kind sorry, of getting at. What do, you, what do you mean by that? Maynard is the same. No matter what band you put him with, he's a genius. Because there's nobody... Because there's yeah. Perfect Circle, and yeah. also Pussifer, which is his... His, not uh, as good, but uh, it's fucking great. It's just no. weird. It's weird. Though. <laughs> that's true. Okay, but that's that's kind of my point, and not to no, you know, but, be terrible to you, but my point is essentially is that you look at, for instance, Queen, where Queen, yes, good band, but Queen was Freddie Mercury. It's that simple. It's not Led Zeppelin to me is not Plant. It's 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 everybody. It's everybody. Right? Yeah. Whereas. I could put any band behind Freddie Mercury and you're still going to get that same emotion. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that to me is what kind of discounts your uh, your debate a bit. And I will have to agree with uh, we'll have to agree with him on that because Maynard really no matter what band he's in, he sounds incredible. Yeah. It, you know, so it's 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 a good one for him on that one too. This is pretty tight. Tight like a tiger? I don't know. <laughs> I need Jeff, why, why, why not? Maynard, Jeff, save yourself. Why not Maynard, Jane Keenan, and Freddie Mercury? Why Robert Plant over them? Uh, Robert Plant is again, he's different, but I would just say, you know, went at it with a different perspective on vocals. Really, re- really thought about trying something new, and it paid off. Uh, if you want and, something new, you're going to Maynard for the, he's on a different level different. for something new. Different decade, and and at the time when he was, you know, it was revolutionary I for the time. Fucking that was used math to write a song, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of cool. Also, and a recipe for some fucking German food. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> some fucking German schnitzel recipe, and he's like, "Oh, let's make that into a fucking song. It'll be great." Okay, so you're not going to take any shots at these two? No, because well, he knows would, he's done. I would say just Robert Plant is. Oh, fuck. I, yeah, I'll throw Robert Plant is nothing without the background band. It's that simple. He's a good vocalist, and he tried something new, and it paid off. That's why I picked him. All right. Uh, His whole band tried something new. Uh, if anything, you've made a lot of positive points for Maynard James. I have, yes. Keenan. Because I do enjoy him. Uh, why not him? Why not him? Why, why Freddie Mercury over him? Because Freddie Mercury has sold way more fucking music, plain and simple. They're still making fucking money on that dynasty. And the fucking guy's been dead AIDS for what? How many years now? Uh, over 30, like 30 now, maybe? Yeah, he, well, he died when I was in fucking junior 25. high, I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, so. that yeah, That's all well and good. You can write a ton of songs, like Bicycle. Okay. And, and sell, I knew he was going to throw the bicycle albums, in. But every you song. Fucking you fucking me on, again. You put, on, you put on any, any Tool album, any Perfect Circle right. album, I'm and you're, s- you're listening to every song, and you're totally okay. fine. I'm gonna There's sum no this r- bicycle. I'm going to sum this up right now. How many people own Tool albums? I don't own any albums. Well. <laughs> I have them like digital files. I can tell. Okay. You I have some imagine. Tool. You have some Tool. I have some Tool. That's three. Yeah. Everybody at this table has Queen. I have had, yeah. Like on your are you on your iPod or something? Or? Absolutely, any any form of media. That's a band, though. But you have it. What? That's a band. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you're fucking friends. out of this anyway. What are you okay, talking about? So you're all done. All three of us had Tool, but all four of us had Queen. Damn That's right. That's all well and good, but Dave didn't even know who. Like he had to look up Robert Plant for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> he had to look up Tool too, but he knew who fuck, he knew who 
fucking Freddie Mercury was. And if anybody knows something, it's fucking Dave when it comes to this. I'm going to give myself a check because Dave is fucking fantastic in this category. Yeah, see? I got another check. Flattery will get you everywhere. There you go. See? I'm just trying to win it on that. No, but in all in all fairness, I do I do like Maynard. He, fantastic vocalist, but he is not fucking Freddie Mercury. Plain and simple. And Freddie Mercury could exist outside of Queen, no problem. Ah, oh, you already said that his solo work wasn't good. His solo work was when he had fucking AIDS and he was gonna die. <laughs> like, it was terrible. Good. Well, it's different mindset, you know. It's it's not the same thing. Okay. I win. Um, I win. Put it down. We're done. <laughs> I didn't get you that. Uh, well, I was just tabulating the the points you made, but then I'm accounting for the X's you got. Well, I only have two X's there. Yes, yeah, so you had. And I have what? You, you had, seven checks. So you that, had seven checks, but two taken away because of the X's. So that gives you five. Yeah. That ties you with what? How many checks I gave? I think we should both get the point. I'm going to split the point. I'm going to give it to Jody and to Kevin. All right. All right. You're going to tie the round. All so right. All right. I'll concede. Point that. awarded. Sorry, Congratulations, guys. Okay. You don't know shit. <laughs> Dave knows fucking... He knows who Freddie Mercury is. He didn't even have to look it up. Yeah, but he doesn't know who Robert Plant is. For well, this is thing. true. I do now. I do now. <laughs> I learned something. He, goes, he tells me, he goes, you should pick uh, Steve Perry from Journey. And I go... <laughs> Why? Journey? And I go, if I pick that... He go, I go, if I go... If I Dave, I, I, I'm tempted to cut you right now. <laughs> I'm just going to break this bottle and cut you. We're done. The game, because of the music round, I get destroyed. Um, okay, but it's part of the game. You got destroyed in this music round. You weren't even playing. That was incredible. I know. Especially like you got journey. fucked. You guys are lacking knowledge. You got fucked on this category, and you're the host. <laughs> like, wow. Not yeah, even unanimously, a, we all decided. Not even a reach around. Like, well, I heard of Led Zeppelin. You were raped. I know Led Zeppelin's a band. I heard uh, Led Zeppelin's a band, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of Led Zeppelin. I, believe. <laughs> I still can't believe you hadn't heard of Tool. Quite honestly, I, I, I had heard of Tool, but not the actual oh, singer. Singer. Right. Yeah, I knew Tool was a band. He used to talk about it when I was a kid. So. Anyway, moving on to sports. Just like Led Zeppelin, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you right now, if Dylan is listening to this, <laughs> Dylan's like, I want to fucking call in. And it's already over, but I, I want to call in anyway. I'm going to come through Skype and stab Dave with a knife. With a fucking I'm going to send him an emoticon of him being stabbed. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Moving on to sports. Ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, sports question this week. Uh, we, we went with a little bit of, of not pick your champion this time. We're, we're trying to go a little bit different with some of the questions. Should professional athletes be paid as much as they are? Who's first? I think it's you, Jeff, me. right? That's me. No, it's Jeff. It's the I, Jeff man. I said yes, believe it or not. No, it's me. It's four so, so they are paid. You said yes, they are paid enough? I'm saying they're paid really? enough. Really? They're, they're not overpaid, he's saying. He's not overpaid. They, they, they not deserve overpaid. what they get. They yeah. deserve what they but get. Okay. Why? Because the, I would say, I would argue that... You know, years ago, they used to not get paid enough. They now now they get paid proportionate to revenue, proportionate to advertising, which is the way most businesses should work. Right, and there's you know there's unions. But if that's the case, everybody on the fucking leaf should be making killer money now. Yep. Well, in general, like they, they should all have fifteen mil a year contracts. The way yeah. the NHL does it, well, is obviously, it's revenue, revenue share. share. I'm, I'm just being funny, but right, still, yeah, yeah. right. Well, apparently not that funny. But. Like the players get, what is it, like 50% in the NHL example, they get like 50% of the revenue or something like that. They split 50-50 between that. Maybe It used to be more. Mm-hmm. I can tell you per average though because I do have those statistics. I think it splits out roughly half, some somewhere in that ballpark, like 60-40 maybe, uh, where the owners get a chunk and the players get uh, collectively get a chunk. and then they, But it's split up among all the players, not just you know 30 owners. So, All right. So, the reason why I picked yes is because, yeah, they, one, they didn't get, they used to not get paid enough. Two, um, it should be proportioned. I don't think, you know, say they've got paid like a lot less. Say they got paid $100,000, $200,000 a year. The owners would be raking in all this money, and I don't necessarily think that's fair. And that's why players have unions and people go to bat for them. And it's not necessarily, uh, necessarily you know, comparable to the average, you know, You Joe said working. union and you didn't even X that? 
Well, I'm not anti-union. I am. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just saying, well, <laughs> I'm not saying I am pro or anti. I'm just saying they have them and they fight for they have lawyers that fight for their, um, you know, their cause, and they get what they're owed, basically, and they're owed what the team makes or the league makes, and that's you know, it, it, with, you know, with every sport it's a little different, but I still think when you sign up as a player for a league. You know, you understand, you know what they're getting paid as well. So you get paid based on what you already know, but also what you are owed, depending on what position, what your agent's able to get you. You have to pay your agent. Yeah, you know the. So I would just go with the, you know those points. You know, as far as that's why I picked yes. Okay, Jody, what was your answer? Oh no, yeah, we're I'm absolutely Jody. shocked you picked yes, quite honestly. But anyway, all right, I didn't just say no. I said hell no. All right, <laughs> hell no. no hell why? no. Is that an X? Huh? It's nothing yet. <laughs> that better not be a fucking X. I haven't even started yet. <laughs> I haven't done anything. God, you're such a bitch. <laughs> I must have won him over. What the fuck? All right. Yes. I'm going to say that some of these people are grossly overpaid, and I'm going to use one example of one league, and that is the fucking MLB. All right? They sit on their ass 45% of the fucking time. <laughs> And when they're not sitting on their ass, they're standing waiting for somebody to hit a fucking ball. It is so fucking boring, <laughs> and it's terrible. But that aside, let's get to the statistics. Okay. All right? I actually pulled these up because I was ready. All right? I'm ready. Oh, for looking at me. <laughs> not ready. You're not ready. You're going to pull, out, you're gonna pull out that fucking phone right now, aren't you? All right, anyway. I'm not ready. I don't give a shit. Right now. <laughs> Now, this is average yearly salary per player. Yeah. Now, this isn't the star players. This is an average of everybody, including the shit players, all that. Right now, the highest uh, the highest paid are the NBA. Yeah, that's what I... Okay, what I so at 5.15 million. There's less of them in the league, in their there, league. There is less of them in the league, uh, so they do make a little bit more money. Their average year career length is 4.8 years. All right. MLB, 3.2 million per player. Per year. 3.2 million. Now think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Out of the 3.2 million, one and a half million of that, approximately, you're sitting on your ass. One and a half. All right. Let's let's be fair here. Well, you're off six months. A million and a half. Well, well, I didn't even count the six months. I'm just talking the season part. Yeah. All <laughs> right. The other part where the six months you're doing fuck all other than spring training and drinking and banging broads, like it's <laughs> what? Which I'm not gonna hold also that against as them. the bonus is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to hold that against them. That's Contract good. Bonuses. That's good. Yeah. All right. But if you compare that to even the NHL, which I find very dear to me, um, as we all know, and anybody who's ever listened to the show knows I'm very pro NHL. Mm -hmm. um, average NHL salary, $2.4 million. And I think they work a lot fucking harder. Okay. All right. And we've Point experienced example. two lockouts in the last 10 years. Absolutely. We have. Um, but that gets back to money. Plain and simple. Mm -hmm. uh, NFL, NFL, which I was absolutely shocked. Average salary one point nine per year, which I was I was right. And they dumbfounded by that, and they work hard. They work hard. Right? Yeah. So I will say that those guys not overpaid. All right. They put their bodies at risk. Oh, absolutely. Every time they walk out there. But I think every, realistically, let's face it, every pro athlete does put their body at risk. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's be fair. Okay, even the fucking fat guys that play on the fucking baseball teams. And I'm a fat guy, so I'm not being prejudiced. There's not as many of them anymore. Well, I guess there still are a lot of fat guys. In There's Detroit. a lot of chubby guys. I, I, I tuned into TSN the other day to see the highlights, and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of chubby guys. I could do this. <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't, obviously, because they do have some skill. I, they never use it, but they have it. <laughs> um, but the MLB is fucking horrible. It is a boring fucking game, and they pay them way too fucking much. They're making, on average, a million more per player then. than fucking the NHL people who are risking their bodies left, right, and center. They're making even more, than, like way more than the NFL guys, which I can't, I don't really care for American football, but you know what? At least I can appreciate it as a game that does require a lot of skill, in my opinion. MLB, not so much. You swing a fucking bat, you hit a ball once in a while. You know, whoop de doo, you run for it. You got like a flying projectile coming out of your head. And, oh, like, who fucking cares? So do the people that are on the fucking and army, and they don't make that. Right. The fucking guys in the army are getting shot at left, right, and fucking center, and they're not making three point two million a year. I can guarantee that. 
Mm-hmm. So like, why is that even a, a, even an attempt? But like the NBA, like they do they do a lot of physical activity. There's a lot of games, a lot of physical activity. I still think they're a bit overpaid, but I think out of every, <laughs> well, a little bit more than a bit, I guess. Let's be fair, but I think grossly overpaid is baseball, plain and simple. And it's a fucking terrible sport. All right, okay. plain and simple. Okay, not exactly the question, but it's a fucking answer though, and that's what you want. <laughs> All right, Kevin, what was Since your the question wasn't specifically about baseball, no. I'm going to say that, no, I don't think that athletes are overpaid. I think you're, you're, you're with Jeff. Yes. Okay. Uh, Do you, I think is if, your argument any different than Jeff's, though? Uh, one different point. Okay. But it's, it's, I think if more businesses ran the way that, that, that sports ran, we'd all have a lot more money. Well, I mean, this is true. It, it, they do have it to a science. Right. If there's, a, if there's more of a profit-sharing model in it, then that's the way every business should run. So we should be looking at them as a model, not not as as, as just these rich assholes that only work half the time. Mm-hmm. Um, the other reason is that they um, their careers are short. Yep. And they could get hurt any time and be done. So they need that security. They need the money. If they made a hundred thousand dollars a year, that's not really much security going into the future. And I mean, you know, you can do other jobs afterwards, but when you're uh, in school and going for a sports scholarship, you're not fucking worried about what happens after. You're focused on sports. That's your main focus. I almost made the question: Should um, college athletes like? You know who work in the college system should they be paid because right now they're not being paid and it's a, it's a bit of a point of controversy uh, well they're well, they are being paid the but states, they're being paid in, in, the for, states, in a different way in, in the states, states i absolutely they're being paid in like in in with not in money bursaries and stuff like that i think they should be in the states because college football, college football is, is generous massive, massive, massive revenue massive. Yeah. march massive massive sports is, is crazy so you, maybe they should be paid Right. Well, but some of them are starving. Really, they can't even afford to buy food. But, but that. But that's the thing: is that just sports stars don't normally have a long career. It, it's it's a rare sports star that has a long career because when you put your body on the line, you just eventually you break down, and that's it. The thing is, you know, these guys are entertainers. They're entertainers. People come watch them. Watch what they do. Watch guys sit down on a bench in a dugout. People like this. why they find this entertaining. They're willing to pay money for it. If they're willing to pay someone to go watch and sit down, then, then that guy should get paid. they're fucking stupid. Well, that's not the guy sitting down's fault in that's the dugout. True. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, that's the per- person who's buying the ticket. That's Don't their you fault. fucking actually. <laughs> <laughs> every time, you know what? I'm just going to shut up because every time I fucking agree with somebody, I get a fucking X. <laughs> go figure. It's terrible. Fuck you, Dave. <laughs> You know, if, would you uh, consider movie stars grossly overpaid, Jody? Oh, absolutely. Because they get, you know, Tom Cruise gets paid twenty million dollars a movie. Might yeah, take still him, haven't figured out why might, that happens. Might take anyway. him twenty. That wasn't um, the question, though. Might take him uh, two million. You know, but they're entertainers. That was Kevin's answer, though. He goes, uh, "No, the the professional athletes aren't paid too much, but the actors are." I'm like, "Well, interesting point, but not really as relevant." Uh, Jody, why are they wrong? Because they fucking are. <laughs> but anyway, uh, past that. No, no, no. That's my answer. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, they're wrong because I'm fucking awesome. Oh, no, that's your answer too, isn't it? Um, I, I do agree somewhat with the point that uh, Kevin has made, specifically on the fact that they do have short lifespans, I guess, is a way to look at it. Um, you know, the average career length, as far as I can tell, on the, four ma- or on the five majors is approximately four years. Okay. I also have the statistics. That's shorter than I even thought. Yeah. <clears throat> that's actually pretty short. Well, that makes um, sense. But if you look at if you look at how that's distributed, obviously it's based on watch. You know, let's let's be safe here. The NBA is making the most because they are the most watched right now. Right. Well, they're the most watched, and there's also the fact that they have like a hockey size audience inside their building. Yes. But they only have like half the players of a hockey team. Yeah. Yeah. And so they can pay more. Which so is, the baseball stadium is a lot bigger. It's fucking huge. It's boring, and they get paid a lot of fucking money. It's the, the the biggest issue that I have with, and I'm and the reason why I'm picking baseball is because I think it is the pinnacle of why we're paying too much. We're paying too much for a boring sport to watch. I don't know why people watch it. I don't, but it's you know if that's your thing, it's your thing. Um, but to be paid three point two million to sit on your ass forty five percent of the time during play season, and then have another six months off, you might as well be a fucking teacher. It's the same thing. 
right? You get two months off, you fucking work apparently really hard, but I don't agree with that completely. I think there's a lot of teachers that do, but not everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and I there's think a lot of that hits you because I think actually you have teachers in your family. Um, yeah, and they're, they don't work very hard. No, exactly. So <laughs> they might as well go they have a pile. And money. you know what? My, if any teachers are listening right now, I suggest you take up professional baseball. <laughs> because I think you'll make more money. Now, whoops. Yeah, if anybody's <laughs> listening, I'm fucking shocked. But let's face it. But well, I the think thing, the thing about the internet broadcast is they live here forever. So some of you listening to this years from now. Hello, future listener. Yeah, well, I guess everyone. It could be the year 2025 and someone's <laughs> listening to this. I doubt it. But anyway. Why the fuck would they bother? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but the question was, should professional athletes be paid as much as they are? Not all of them. I think some do deserve it, though. But not the baseball players. What do you mean? Not which the baseball ones, players. Which ones do and which ones don't? Uh, I think the hockey players. He says the hockey it. players do. They, they fucking risk their teeth getting shot out every fucking time. Do the basketball minutes. players deserve it? Uh, yes. Not as much. He said not yes, as much, and I disagree more with the basketball than baseball. If there was, if you were to, pick that's because two, you fucking like baseball, if, don't no, you? No, it's if you were to pick two sports. I can find a picture of you at a baseball game. I guarantee it. Oh, you can find yeah, hundreds I, of pictures I, of me at a baseball game, and I. But that's hate because it. you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. My mom used to drag me to like four or five games a year. I've even been dragged to baseball oh, games, and that's why I fucking brutal. hate them. Here, but why it, don't you keep score? That's but the question, question is, the entertain. They do that on the fucking jumbo The question is. Should professional athletes be paid as much as they are? I feel that if we're looking at professional athletes from the baseball community, I would say no, they shouldn't be paid as much as they are. Uh, if not, name the group which is most overpaid. That's the fucking baseball people, plain and simple. I disagree. Three point two fucking million, and you have the NHL who's only doing two point four million. Is soccer I think, on that I think the amount of money. Soccer is on the list, and no, they're getting paid MLS. nothing. That's MLS. that is on the list. I think the amount of this money, was American. The amount of money isn't really the issue. I think the issue is that we should be looking to sports for a model for other. Other businesses, but that's not what the question's about. In my but opinion. that's why they're. Not I'm not overpaid. arguing that they're not overpaid because okay, the league can... is doing it right. They're traveling. Mm. The owners are willing to pay those players. They give them the contracts. That's on them. That's not you know. They're the ones dishing out the money. If we if should be looking at them, they're the doing average it right. The average baseball player will make seventeen point nine million dollars in his career. He has an average career of five point six years in the majors. All right. Now, that doesn't really cover whether they go back down to the minors, they make some money there, they're going to make something, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but $17.9 million, and to get back to your point, was, well, they have a short career span, they should be making mm-hmm. as much as they can. I, I agree with that to a degree. But I think if you're paying based on entertainment value and what they're worth, I don't think baseball players are worth the money they're being paid, which is what the question is. But that's is. exactly what they're being paid on, is their entertainment value. No, they're not being paid on that. They're being paid on people going, watching a boring fucking game and paying Why money for it. Why are they going it. if that's they're not that, entertained? That's the same thing. I don't know. I mean, I, the I last time I went to a baby, you <laughs> went to fucking drink. That's what you went to do. No, and that's what I did. I'm child. Well, that's what I did. I'm not I didn't, I didn't go and hang out with my mom at 25 and get loaded at a baseball game. I might have. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying that my you. mother. This is true. Uh, I'm not going to argue that at all, but <laughs> that is what the question was, and I stand by my answer. I, don't, I just disagree with his point about that baseball players not putting their bodies at risk as well. Like not can, nearly as much as those other. What are you talking about? Like The, the guys, like. Two, they sit on their ass 45 Two guys minutes. in the Blue Jays spring training already blew their knees out. They haven't played a yep. regular game yet. Yep. Why? And it was it the first time they've ever played fucking baseball? No, but no. I'm just saying they're playing a game, they blew their knees out. Look at look at goalies. How long do you have for a fucking goalie on in uh, NHL? How long do you have on them? Realistically, five, prime. five seasons. Prime five seasons, maybe, maybe if you're lucky. If it's right? a good one, ten. Yeah, well, look at Brodeur. Brodeur was great for almost twenty, 20 years, real estate. Yeah. But he is so some that sort of up the compensation they get for he their should get work. And I'm not arguing because the NHL not, making not, money. But here's the thing: it's not just that these sports stars are. Just it's like one day they woke up. This and is was turning like, into hey, a history. Yeah, woke question, woke up and went, "Hey, guess what? I'm going to be a fucking hockey player today." And then they step on the ice and get oh, a no, job. I, I they have to that. work unpaid for years and years and years just to get up to that level and take so many take that shot yeah. and don't Qu- make it. Question for you: if, So let's say, so they're being compensated for all those years. The, as well. the, the, take, the, the box office or whatever is still taking in the same amount of ticket sales. Yep. Would you rather that money go to the to Rogers 
or to the Blue Jays players? For the box? Well, Rogers is what's providing the venue. They're providing all of the equipment. They're providing all of that for that for that team. Right. Well, I, obviously, who it's, deserves it's, to make the profit sports, in but, the case of baseball? Oh, I. Well, I think that I think the players need to be paid absolutely, but I think it should be paid based on level of what you're doing. I, I don't think that I personally don't think that the effort is being put into playing baseball as it is being put into hockey or fucking basketball or even the NFL. And I can't stand the NFL, but I still think it's a game that requires a lot of physical demand. And when you look at football players, you're speaking about people blowing out knees, man. Fucking football players, like they could be done in a season. Like, some of them get fucking just killed in yeah. their first season of And play. they have one of the worst unions, and... I don't know much about the unions, so I'm not going to argue that. Well, I, mean, I think about, like, with baseball, the Blue Jays were laying off people when, they, you know, ticket sales went down or whatever, mm-hmm. but, you know... They weren't laying off players, though. No, they, they can't lay off players, yeah. but they can lay off people. So the know. players are still getting paid, even though the guy's up at the front office that's doing all the fucking work for the advertising and all that shit, he's losing his fucking job. But the guy who's making $3.2 fucking million dollars to sit on his ass on a fucking bench for 45 fucking minutes every time they play, like, fucking, that guy still gets his fucking paycheck. How is that being run fairly? It's not. Okay. Uh... How is it not? What do you mean, how is it not? I, the guy up in the upper office is losing his fucking job because they can't fucking bring in this... They can't bring in the people that they need to bring in. I love that guy. But they're paying the guy $3.2 million to sit on his ass and once he's in a while he hits a ball. He's sitting on his ass and once in a while hit a ball. He's traveled around the country. Yeah, he's, he's sitting on his ass on a bus media. or in a plane. He's doing... You know, then he gets he's, there. He's, you know, all day he's busy. You know, I'm just saying, like, overall... I'm absolutely. not saying it's not a job. It's a legitimate job. Absolutely. I agree. It's like a full-time, non-stop job. Training all the time. That's all. Eat, sleep, yeah. breathe, sports. That's and you all do they that do. well before you start getting paid. Well, of course you do. Well, every sport. You're you're not going to get paid for a good while until you yeah, actually every make the major sport. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And even the MLS, which, let's face it, they're the lowest paid out of everybody. They get well, point one six million per year mm-hmm. is an average player. That's just MLS, but that's oh. MLS, which is barely <laughs> barely <a league. laughs> surviving right now. All right, um, I'm giving the point to the team up to Jeff and Kevin. Bitches. So congratulations, guys. <laughs> it was close though. You almost had it. You almost had. I should have fucking had it. And if you didn't stop being all fucking ex happy over there, we would have been all right. <laughs> All right. But to be fair, guys, you made very valid points. I agree. Can I have a, a beer? For this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. We should get a beer sponsor. We should. We should. This round brought to you by Rickards. Rickards Red Irish Style Ale. Yeah. 5.2 alcohol per volume. I never they're knew it was an Irish paying, style, yeah. but sure. Oh, they're not paying us? No, no. Oh, yet. fuck oh, you yeah. then, Rickards. <laughs> okay. Contact us. Tweet us. <laughs> We'll sponsor. We'll, we'll you invite us on Google yes. Plus. We will drink as much free product as you want to provide. Let's be fair. We okay. love Rickards, especially if they send us free stuff. Okay, moving on. The history round. Ding, ding, ding. This one, another open ended question. Does history even matter? I get this argument a lot. People who hate history say to me, I don't care about history. So it made me go, instead of asking a a historical question, let's talk about the subject in general. You get this question asked a lot. Like when you're at the Starbucks listening on your iPod (laughs) to the fucking Brown album, sipping on your cafe latte. Or my box wine. Or your box wine, yeah, (laughs) while you're sitting outside the LCBO. Walking around going, who's who's Led Zeppelin? Who's Robert Plant? Who's Robert Plant? I don't know who that fucking guy is. Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Hey, they have an album with the Zeppelin on it, don't they? Um, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, we threw the electricity in. Oh, Oh, Dylan's just sitting there all giggly right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's X to Kevin. X to Kevin for sure. Excellent. (laughs) I only agreed to it. I didn't actually say it, so I don't get an X. Okay, we're gonna start with um, with Jody on this. On this, I'll get an X. I get an X on every fucking round. Yeah. (laughs) Little bitch. I'm going to be fucking scared Does history shitless. matter, Jody? Ha, fuck yeah, it does. Why? I don't fucking know, but it does. No, I'm just kidding. Because um, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to butcher the guy's name. George Santiana, Spanish-American poet. Uh, what else was he? he was writer. A couple guys. He said it best. Quote, those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. If it isn't 
If, if history isn't important, we will never learn. If we do not learn, we will repeat it. That's exactly what that quote means, and it is true to this day and age. We didn't learn from the Iraqi war, the first one. What did we do? We did it again. Well, we didn't, but the Americans did. Mm-hmm. Um, and we love our American people. We of course. Do. We are Canadian. We're not but we slagging do. on the Americans. We are not slagging on the Americans at all. We love those people, especially Jim Edelson, if he's... If he's We'll, we'll give Maybe him. my favorite American. Uh, I wouldn't say he's my favorite American, but he's he's up there <laughs> for sure. He's he's reach around material for sure. Um, <laughs> either praise, way, high praise. What's up? High praise. That is high praise. <laughs> if I'm willing to reach around, it's high praise. Yeah. Um, the uh, my main point really is that if we if we don't look back at at what we've done and what we've learned from those mistakes, we will repeat it. And it, that quote does nothing better than to tell us that if you know. We have not had another major world war. Why? Because nobody fucking wants it because we know what happened the last time. How come they didn't learn from the first one? They should have fucking learned from the first one, but they didn't. Okay? And that even proves my point even more. If we don't learn from it, we will do it again. We learn from it. That's what Battlestar Galactica said. You know, this has all happened before. Why is everything about Battlestar Galactica with you? (laughs) Because it's fucking awesome. Yeah, Battlestar. (laughs) We're, we're, I think you're going to lose that X in a second. It's fucking awesome. Oh, check mark for him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, why is everything Battlestar Galactic? Well, that's just a fucking X right there. Um, anyway. <laughs> he actually didn't give me an X. I'm, I'm kind of I will give you an X on that. If you bring up Babylon 5, you might If it. I bring up Babylon 5, I'm done. Um, either way, it's... What? Oh. <laughs> oh. You, lo- you just lost it again. Check mark. <laughs> Wow, this is a really biased show, isn't it? Um, either way, get get to my point. I'm not going to take it long because I know that the history the history one is always terrible for us, um, and we have the master uh, at the table. The one with the history degree. Harder. Yeah, the guy who's got a history degree, which I'm just hoping he throws the fucking wrench in because it's going to be funny. Um, <laughs> either way, we, we need to learn. We have progressed as humanity. We've learned from our mistakes Sometimes, sometimes we don't. Either way, we have to have history because if we don't look back, we can't make a valid decision for the future. Okay. Um, so, and okay. that's another check mark. So you want to throw it's the that same one. point? You just said no. It. It's not the same fucking point. All right. No. Anyway, I'm just <laughs> kidding. All right. Fine. One. Kevin. Um, right. He's got his phone out. Of course, history. Man. Right, so just, yeah. So, are you different than Jody? Or are you teaming up with Jody here? I'm a little different. Okay. But that's, not. That's uh, not just remember, different. I um, I helped I think, you out with that tool one. I think a lot of. Uh, the that's the obvious point is if we if we don't study history we're doomed to repeat it but i i feel like we do repeat it even though we learn um to me prohibition is is just the perfect analogy for that coming back to the drugs yes always everybody believes (laughs) always (laughs) everybody (laughs) always believes that everybody believes that prohibition was wrong and yet we still do it oh it's true it's true so but that's not that's not it i i think history is important because it's it's not just a collection of data and facts like like it's taught in high school. It's really a study of humanity, and really it's a window into the, the just astounding capacity we have for courage, mm-hmm. for compassion, but also the capacity we have for cruelty. And I think it, it rather than documentaries and facts, I think historical fiction plays a great role in this. Because it makes you feel what it what it was like. I mean, my wife and I were watching uh, uh, Book of Negroes okay. not too long ago, and it just it dawns on me. I watch it, and it dawns on me, and I look at all these people watching someone get whipped. Mm-hmm. Well, that was just Saturday entertainment, right? Hey, honey, you want to go yep. down and watch someone get fucking sadly, beaten but it to was. A yeah, and it, it really it, it's really a window into. I don't remember the last time I went on. to a public uh, whipping. I've also found that <laughs> so I guess person, we learned something. A person we, we've who, uh, um, who's more civilized, a person who studies history even on the most superficial level, is uh, is able to question themselves more, mm-hmm. their own beliefs, their own biases, and and even their own bigotry. I mean, mm. I don't I don't think that. Um, a person who grew up with stories of, say, the civil rights movement is going to hate on gays as much because it, they're kind of analogous, right? Mm-hmm. And that, that's well, it. It's just, it's just kind learning. of a window into humanity, and it's more, it's more than, just, than just repeat, like being doomed to repeat past mistakes. It's, it's really a study of people and of us. 
Well, it's why behaviors we, and stuff like that as well. Why we do the things we do? Exactly. Why we do the things we do? Not even, not even why. It makes you question why, but it doesn't really answer why. Yeah, a lot of times you don't know why. It, yeah, it, it doesn't it answer why, but it, you, you know, know how it finished, but you don't know how it started. Questioning is is more important. But the question is, are you are you better off knowing the question? And the answer is generally yes. You are. You know, it's. You have to always yes. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to find a no. You're just not. So that's why history is important. I think. Okay, Jeff. Does history matter? No. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I want to hear it. Tell me how you wasted your uh, your 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 training. I would say I wasted my training, and I agree with all what Kevin said. That is a window into our past, and it's a study of humanity, and you can learn a lot from history. But let's face it: as a human race, we don't give a shit about it. We care about what's about. going on right now. We very rarely, if we see something like you're saying, you watch a movie or you get that view into the past, you kind of go, fuck, that's fucked up. Why would we like that? And then you kind of just you know go about your day. Anyway, we don't really question things. We just kind of analyze, kind of try to understand, but we don't question things anymore. Right? Like George Carlin said, I've had it with the human race, I've given up. And I kind of have the same opinion when we're talking about this question. Um, you know, we say we constantly repeat what, you know, what we've done in the past. It's because we don't, we're not good enough at saying, hey, why are, why are we repeating it? Questioning the people that are making those decisions. A lot of times we don't end up making those decisions. It, you know, I can't say I did because I didn't vote for that person or I didn't have anything to do with that decision. But without historical record, things would be much, much worse. Fair enough. But that is... A lot of her- uh, historical record is... We'd be eating people. It, it doesn't pertain to power. Well, it's is true. Is what I'm trying to talk about here. And power is one thing that humanity does not question enough and does not fight against enough. We question who's in power, what, what their motives are, what they're up to. Like We just kind of go, well, they know. They know best. They know what they're doing. This is why I say history is not... We, we don't learn from it. We don't care about it. We just do our jobs or you know care about our kids you know and look toward the future we really just as a people don't study it and question what's going on when we go stop at an airport we're getting searched our civil liberties are being basically shit all over we just go eh, safety you know they bend so, us so over. your argument is it would matter if we actually gave a shit but we don't so therefore today in today's society it doesn't matter we don't give a fuck but there you is. don't speak for the whole human race here. The to to say that I don't give a fuck about history is a complete understatement. It's the really? okay. Yeah, so. I I completely agree with. Well, I, I do agree with some of your points. Don't get me wrong, but it's the to say that I don't care about history. Like I I absolutely care about history, and I do make decisions what, based on. What that. do you do about it? I drive a car with airbags because we learn from history that we have to have those fucking airbags. They will save us more than they'll hurt us. That's what we've learned. We, le- we do crash testing because of history. You know, everything that has to do with safety is done from history. History isn't just like, you know, 50 years ago. History could be from last week. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, for instance, we, one of us could have had a date last week. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. But anyway, yeah. could have had a date last week and could have learned how they enjoyed that person from that week and knew what to talk about this week because we learn from history. History is, it's all around us. We're always constantly evolving from it. And we have written language because of history. We have, everything we have is based on history. I don't understand how you could say that. We don't care about that. If we didn't care about history, we'd all own slaves. Absolutely. You don't have a slave, do you? Who freed slaves? Did you? Did the people? Or did... A president have to sign that you know amendment into order, and did he do it because he wanted to, or because it's kind of what made sense? It was it was not necessarily. But it made sense because of history. Are around today who pander to the people? If the people wanted slaves, we'd have slaves. You got it. I disagree. <laughs> I mean, I don't think so. I, I, I mean, do. Yeah, I, I absolutely do. Yeah. We get whatever we want. But we're just too stupid to know what we want. I don't think so. I don't think we do get what we Consensus want. Consensus rules in this I don't scenario. think. I don't think um, 
a lot of foreign policy majority is not uh, well, Paul, what if you're talking foreign, foreign policy that's a different that's a different that's thing. a whole other ball of wax, um yeah. uh but d- domestic policy absolutely uh, politicians deal with they, they they do what the people want or at least they try to get like they're always trying to get the votes it's it's they don't even have opinions of their own Okay, where do you think a lot of politicians get their votes? Is it for, how do they run their campaigns? Is it by people or is it money? By oh, money, money absolutely. Right, where do they get their money? From companies. Right. From the history, from so all who, their previous, who are they more loyal other to previous generations. <laughs> oh, we're not. Yeah, they're more loyal to the companies. Right. But if the people decided they don't want something, if if the people decided they want wanted slaves, we'd have them. We would have them. If America because didn't want a black president, okay. they wouldn't have it's elected. It's a weird him. analogy to go that way, but it is kind of weird. Yeah. But um, had a few beers. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a few beers. <laughs> We're in a history round, you know. Fair Provided fair. by records, by it's, the way. It's, it's it's weird because it's it's so over the top, right? right? It, it, but I could say, like, I kind of go back to the point I made about the airport. We kind of are slaves to what. We want. We want safety. We want, you know, you're less likely... Why do we want right. safety? And that's what we're getting. But if people just started blowing through... But why do we want that, safety? Mass, we want safety because of all the previous that incidents anymore. that's happened. Right. But Which is fucking history. I'm not we saying, want that. If, what if know, those, you know why history matters? If more p- people did study history, this world would be a better place. Not having it at all would be a goddamn disaster. I'm not saying that. It's I want to be on his side. <laughs> you want to team up with him? Let, let me Whatever, go, let me go right. back to the word that was used. Matter. Does it matter? Not do we have it? We're, of course we have it. We're always going to have it. That's not the question. The question is, does it matter? And really, like, look at it. Like, do we change our ways? Do we go? Do we? We really, have changed our ways. Because really? Of history. You just said we. You know, we we did the Iraq War. We did it again. Did, did, did we fight against this? Did we differ this? different? Yeah, absolutely. We, we don't change our ways 100% of the time, but we no. do change our ways. But it still influences all of our decisions. The reason why we accept the fact that when we're in the airport and we're getting patted down and felt up um, is because we know that at one point in time in our history, we've had problems where there's been people who have jumped on planes and fucking took them over and blew them up. All right. We go through that and because also, we've learned from that. That is fucking the essence of what history is. I don't, I don't is. know why why you're bringing up airports as well. It's really not that hard to get through security in an airport. No, it's not. It's, it's not, not the point, though. It's about liberties and 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 what okay. you, you know your rights are. And the, how, how how many things are wrong in the world today, in spite of history? Like we know we have history. We know what the, all this bad shit happened. Right. And things still remain the same regardless. Okay, so how about we could go a different way? We could go with covert operations. How, do all right. So everything that they do, okay, we have a Freedom of Information Act, but everything they do, we're not allowed to know. In mm-hmm. the interest of security. Once again, I go, I go back to the, you know these points, but um, we don't run our countries. Do you want as, to know that information people, though? Well, the thing is, do you want to know that information? Do you trust the people that do have them? And why do you? History has nothing to do with trust when it comes to this, though. You, you want to know? Do you want to know that information? If you want to know that information, that is history. That is exactly right. what it is. Do we have access the, to the, that history? The, the, no, uh, the civil rights movement, though, where you're talking government. But if we're talking the civil rights movement, as a person who studies the civil rights movement is much less likely to go and beat a gay on his own without government. It makes a kinder world, and it has made a kinder world. If you look back... The world was a savage place, but Black through people. time we have learned through history. Have, 50, it, 50 it's years a ago, savage place. There's eight thousand murders it's a year much, in the United States. Much less savage. Like you, you've made a point on. And the if we were in before, Wild West times, how many right people now? are incarcerated <laughs> in prison? Right. I did. I also said that, that we don't get it right hundred percent of the time. No, well, we're not saying that it's it's, it's it is it is right. We don't learn, learn from history hundred percent of the time. I, I made the point at the very beginning of my argument that pro, we haven't learned from prohibition, but we have learned from other things, and it doesn't mean that just because we didn't learn from prohibition that it makes history irrelevant. History doesn't matter. How much money is made off the people that are incarcerated? Same thing with prohibition. How much money was made off illegal bootlegging? Well, that's a problem with government, not with history. That's 
has a lot to do with what I'm trying to say, though, about does history matter? We don't, as a people, learn about history as far as governments that you know are in control. It may not, it may not, H- matter, it may not matter as much on a governmental level, but it does matter. We don't use it level. as much as we should. On That's a, what I'm a, trying to say. Like, on a just, personal level, it does matter. It does change minds. Mm-hmm. It might change it your may mind, not on but a do you do anything level. about it? And yeah, does it matter in the fact that do we take action when we learn something? Or do we just kind of go, eh, well, that's important. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, Half of my family I would consider to be borderline racist. I'm not racist. <laughs> and I, I don't give a shit about color. It doesn't affect me at all. And the reason why I know that is because when I was a little guy... I watched stuff that had to do with the fact that there was oppression of black people, oppression of the Indians, you know. All of these different ethnic groups were dealt with in history and were all dealt with pretty fucking poorly. And I'm not saying that even white people are excluded out of this, okay. And as, you know, a fat white Canadian guy, um, you know, whether I'm the minority or not doesn't really matter to me. I don't care. Uh, But I treat everybody equally now. And the reason why I treat everybody equally is because I've seen some of the shit that has happened in the past. And I went, wow, they fucking treated people like this? Like, this is fucking absurd. I would and never it, want to be treated that and way. Even if you want to that is, the, in essence, of what yeah. history fucking and, is. And we and learn even, from that. Even if you want to take it on a governmental level, we, we interred Japanese right. uh, when we were at war with yep. the Japanese. Well, right. we've been at war with the Muslim world whether anybody wants to admit it really or not, mm-hmm. we have been. Are we rounding up um, uh, you know, Muslim Americans, Muslim Canadians, and putting them in camps? No. All right. Because right, we yeah. Because we learned we don't fucking Did need America to... America and Canada wants to pass a bill right now that w- will allow the government to spy on us? Is that happening right now? Especially on... You don't think the governments in, are already not spying on us? Yes, but just in the interest of security. Mm-hmm. You know, those things are... I'm willing to lose some of those civil liberties so like I can I, be oh, safe. I have a different opinion on that. Like That's I fine. said, though, it's not... We don't learn from history 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. Or it takes and a few times. You know what? If... We may if, never learn. If we didn't But it's nice history, for it to be there. If history didn't matter... We wouldn't even know. We wouldn't that even it, contemplate it, it being even a wrong thing. We wouldn't even know that it was wrong mm-hmm. to be spying. On Actually, us. again, I think we're going off base. Where we're saying like we wouldn't know. I'm not saying does history exist and should we have it. That's not what I'm trying to argue. What I'm trying to say does it matter? Do we do anything about it? Not really. Let's face it. You're telling me we we've do. never on made a, a single level, decision we do. On, on that has been based on history. Collectively, as a people, okay. do we do we go after certain things that are like Dave's one, got the hand up. In my, in my, I have to, I have to like figure out something because yeah, <laughs> uh, to to break this. So, uh, most important example, one answer between the two of you of something that history has changed the world, like because history is studied and because it's taught in schools and because people know about it. Every, it that uh, not just slavery is civil rights. Civil rights, yeah, and and and. The, the, the very fact that it is not okay anymore to bash gays. It's just not. It's no. not okay. And government didn't do that. People did that. That's right. The people, people decided, decided that. That that was wrong. Was that because of history? Absolutely. Yeah, it was how they were treated. Absolutely. They, it, it, they learned lessons. Whoever from wants to sleep rights. with whoever is none of my fucking business. And the reason why it's none of my fucking business is because, A, I don't care anymore about it anyway. But, B, is because I've seen how these people were oppressed. Like, they were oppressed because they like to sleep with the same sex. Who gives a shit? I don't care. Trudeau said that... Uh that the government had no place in the bedrooms of the nation. They just got passed it. a bill in Indiana saying that any business can refuse uh, service to a, any gay person if they come in. You know why? Religious freedom. Yep. Right. Now, this is what I'm trying to say is we don't fucking learn from history. We There we, are a group they, of people that will never learn from history. I agree. Completely. I, it's hard to say we because that's everybody. Yeah, but, you're, I think what you're arguing is that governments don't learn. And I, no, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you on that. I think governments don't learn quite a lot. Depends but on the government. government depends on the government. A representation of the people as a whole. And I'm trying to say, do does it matter? Do we do anything about it as a whole? Not really. And we I actually think, do the opposite I think a lot of times. I think governments do learn. I just think they're a little slow behind the rest of the, the, the yeah. nation. Look, uh, even you, you bring up Indiana or whatever. Well, that's a, you know... 
If we learn, how come that just happened? Like literally two days ago. Mm -hmm. Fine. But you're talking one state, will be which represents what? It's Let's say Oklahoma's maybe 1% oh, okay. of the population of the world, which is probably being extremely generous. Yeah. Okay. Maybe half a percent. Yeah. You're look, talking, look. you're searching such a small sample range of humanity that, yeah, well, and even in fucking Ontario, we tax the shit out of gas. Yeah. We pay for roads, but you don't see what the, you know, other countries paying the same amount and they have a fucking same amount of roads. You know, it's, yeah, there's some things we're never going to fucking learn on, but there's also a lot of things that we're not going to learn on. We're not going to learn on certain things, and it's going to take a long time to learn it. But that's not saying that we shouldn't fucking try, and it's not saying that we shouldn't look at the history to find that out. I'm not saying we shouldn't learn it or sh that we should at least take a look and understand that people are going to do that anyway. But if that's the case, then you have matter. to concede the fact that history does matter then. No, it's a different question. What, what the, the question If the question was, do we learn from history in certain aspects? Sure. But does it matter? Do we actually do shit about what we've learned? Not really. If we look at, like... For instance, like, you know, he's talking about prohibition, but we look at, you know, covert attacks on, you know, the, our own, our own, like, um, you know, bodies, our own armies. You know, we've done, like, the United States have done, have done that, you know, at least uh, about a dozen times over the last 150 years. No, they're terrible. And, and it yeah. happens all the time. Just having your mind changed is doing something. Okay. Yep. I'm calling it. I'm giving it to Jody and Kevin. So I have, I, I have to. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. That was a good argument. That was a fucking It was really argument. tough. I almost had that to That was a great that. argument. I was like, fuck. This that was is... a very good argument. But you guys made enough counter... There was actually a couple points there where I thought you were going to take it. I was like... I, J Jody and Kevin made enough counter argument there yeah. that I could... I could That's still... Funny. It doesn't matter, though. I think we're all really close. It is. So... I have three. Kevin has three. Uh, Jeff, Jeff has, has two. two. <laughs> Kevin has three. Like it's so close. You have three. Yeah. So Jeff needs... One. Jeff needs to win this round. If he wins this round, we're all tied, right? We're all tied. But only two of you can go to speed round. Yep. Okay. I thought that history one was going to be short, but holy shit. That was Sometimes good. history goes tied. Like you know what the problem was? It was fucking Jeff. That was the problem. <laughs> well, Jeff well, kept well, coming well, up with... <laughs> Jeff came up with some very good fucking arguments, yeah. and we had to keep countering them. Yeah. He didn't give up, which was... It was... I it thought was, you were going to way quicker the on that The history round was a slugfest. I, gotta I can't believe you fucking went that route, too. Yeah. Like, I know. I was like, I thought we'd get props for going that route. <laughs> <laughs> I, <didn't get> <laughs> I gave you props for that. But they just narrowed... They made enough... They made more good points than you. You only made four really strong points. They made, like, nine between the two of them, so... I think Kevin did more. They had a way easier... They were throwing a softball. <laughs> I was throwing a fastball <laughs> slider. You know? Well, you but know, all we can we can all agree on though, it still was a boring game to watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to the wild card. Ding ding ding. Now I, I went completely different this time. I didn't do something that was a combination of the other five categories. I picked something new. My question is, what food should be banned? Okay, we're gonna go to Kevin first. I hate to bring up prohibition again. Everything's about drugs and prohibition with you. <laughs> I just, it's just one of the worst evils. Um, no shrimps? food. No food should be banned. No food should be banned. None. Okay. You're all wrong. We're all wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no is, this, um, is this on the effect of talking as if you were a stoner? This, the, you why should, yeah, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> why should no food be banned? Because this is not how you affect. Like, what is the what is the point of of banning food I don't know. for in, increased health of the population? Right. Potentially. Uh, I wasn't looking at it from that angle. Well, I was just well, looking at it from horrible food. You, why else would you ban a, a certain food? I don't. I don't even understand what, what the other reason. Would Me and Jody are going to go a different way on this one. We're definitely going a different <laughs> way. Um, <laughs> banning banning a food is uh, is it's just like prohibition. People will get what they want. If they want it, so you go ahead and you ban food. You're still going to create an industry underground for this food. If if it's a food that people you turn a simple question into something about fucking prohibition, I have to give them, <laughs> I have to give them credit Absolutely, for this. Like, I looked at this question as you know, what's just yeah. a shitty fucking food? No one should eat. I don't think people would be bootlegging like you know sauerkraut. Be like, oh, yeah, we well, because that's not what's going to get fucking banned. That's right, because sauerkraut <laughs> is fucking delicious. No, trying to drive change, anyway. trying to drive change and drive health through 
uh, through bands is just it's the wrong answer it's always the wrong answer banning what, anything's what, the wrong what answer. we need to do is is incentivize no, i think it's okay if they ban rape is, okay it, is, it, is, is it okay no. That's a long, I'm talking about substance. That right. that is a leap farther than my my slavery point earlier. <laughs> I can take that to substance <laughs> if you really want me to, but I don't think you do. If we wanted rape, we'd have it. <laughs> <laughs> History has proven to us that rape is not a good idea. I'm trying to make a good point, but no, it just it's not going to get easy on you. They, they know they're done. So. Uh, I don't know if we know we're done. No, but. you need to incentivize the the food companies to make things that are that are nutritious and convenient. People don't respond to bans, they don't respond to things being cheaper. They respond to convenience. Whatever is convenient is good. That's how you affect change. You you make things more convenient. You make it more convenient for you to eat healthy. It's not banning things that need to be fixed. It's the food system that needs to be fixed. Okay. Jeff, what's your what food should be banned? Pickled eggs. Fuck no. They should be fucking banned. What's wrong with you? They smell awful. No one should have to eat them. They're nasty. They do smell awful, they're but they terrible. taste delicious. No, they're awful. No, they're awful. They are manna from heaven. What is the <laughs> fucking matter with you? No. Yeah, I'm with him on that no. one. <laughs> I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you guys against me on the history? Or are you against me on the history? <laughs> 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 What I think is that shit's nasty. You know, they sell them at the fucking curling club. They got this little thing for sauce. That shit fucking is revolting. No one should have to go through even that or even around anyone who's eating that shit. That is gross. Like certain things, like just eliminate from human existence. You talk about history matters. History doesn't matter. We're talking about this shit because all I need to do is get around this shit. I can't believe gross. how charged up you are. <laughs> <laughs> He's really pissed off I'm about pickled <laughs> eggs. I, I am going I'm going to bring pickled eggs to me. I'm going for the enthusiasm <laughs> point. That's a big jar of pickled eggs next time. All right. And All right. Well, you definitely got the enthusiasm. I'll give you that. Fuck, this shit's gross, man. Oh, let me tell you. Fuck. Fuck. They put fucking <laughs> eggs in vinegar and let it rot. And then you go, <laughs> rot. Well, then they don't let it rot, but anyway. Whatever you want to call they, it. They let it, they let it be yeah. awesome. They let it so <laughs> so become, become, vinegar is almost like awesome sauce. They let it become a smelly little dump, and then you put it <laughs> on a fucking plate. That's <laughs> a <some> sauce. <laughs> you eat that shit? What the fuck is this world we live in? Like, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! How do you guys eat this okay, shit? Okay, I think I've heard enough. Oh, I think um, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you just spit out some of that too. That okay, um, the. Uh, All right, beat that. Jody, what's your answer? Okay, number one, I just want to say I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Even though I don't agree with you, because pickled eggs are fucking delicious. They do stink like hell, though. I will give him credit for that. All right, but and to Kevin's point, he took this way more serious than he had to, and I think I, I well, I don't even know what I think at this point. I have to fucking drive home with them. I don't know how that's going to happen. <laughs> um, anyway, I picked avocado, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'm waiting to hear this. Okay. Yeah. Avocado. Avocado. Just wait here, guys. Also awesome. No, it's what not. What does it matter with no, you guys? No, no. Avocado's terrible, and I'll tell you why. I win because you're a taste. Avocados. <laughs> avocados look like an orangutan took a shit. All right? They're black. They're fucking rigid. They're, they're green f- on the inside. Yeah, who gives a shit? They look like that's ass the on the outside. You know, yeah, I'm outside. getting it. Hey, I'm getting there. Right. Don't worry, I'm getting there. All right. All right. All right. On the inside, it's a mixture of either soap and elementary white paste. That's pretty much what they taste like. I don't remember what white paste tastes like, but I'm pretty sure I had some when I was a kid. Okay. All right. I'm pretty sure you did, too. I'm pretty sure I did, too. <laughs> and that might explain some shit. All right. And why the fuck did you already ask me? Oh, because... What did you nail me on? Uh, I can't remember now. But... You're full of shit. <laughs> if you can't remember, you fucking knocked that out. But anyway. All right. I can't remember. Avocado. I knocked that out. I fucking... You, hey, you, you shut... Me. What? That wasn't me for me saying you don't eat the outside. I mean, it might oh, be. is that what it was? I can't All right, I put think... it back then. That's right. fair. That's All fair. Right. All right. I know what he was doing. All right, fair enough, you bitch. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, avocado looks basically like solidified booger. 
All right. Mm-hmm. Because let's face it, it does. All right. There's not a single person at this table that says it looks appealing because it doesn't. It looks like radioactive slime. It is this new fucking found fad that I can put on every fucking thing at every fucking restaurant now. I don't know why because it's terrible. It looks like fucking creamed boogers. That's what it looks like. All right. It looks like snot that's been put half a point. Right? Half a point, yeah. yeah like, well, because I used boogers. I didn't say snot. Is no, right? no, just because I'm All like. Right. Either way. Who cares what it looks like? What do you mean? Food has to look good. And I'll tell you right now, pickled eggs look fucking like pickled eggs. They look like eggs. They still taste good. Of course they smell and taste like shit. <laughs> okay, you just told me a second ago that because I don't eat the outside of the fucking avocado and I can't say it looks like shit, and that's a point Are taken you away from me. that looks at things and go, that looks I want like something that's appealing both to my eye as well as my palate, and it is neither. It looks like a big tear turd. You open it up. It's got a fucking Your huge head. Your look like that. Well, I'm, that's a, that's another issue. <laughs> it's probably all those pickled eggs. But anyway. It's got a big fucking pit in there. So it's like false advertising. Because you think you're getting this big fucking thing. And only you're getting about half of it. Because there's a big fucking pit in there. Right? Sure. On top of that, you take the pit out. Then you got to fucking scrape it all out. And it's like kind of like this almost Play-Doh-ish kind of <laughs> texture. It's, uh, it's just oh, it's yeah, fucking I... awful. It looks like paste. Uh-huh. It tastes like paste and soap. Like, if if you're going to eat soap, I think that it, it tastes like that fucking Thrills gum. You remember Thrills gum? I don't even know if they still make it. Oh, yeah. The, the soap fucking, gum. The soap gum. Yeah. The pink. It, it's actually like an herb, but it tastes like soap. Yeah. But, it's, I think it's called the soap herb. It's It could it's be, yeah. Brutal. It's Thrills brutal. It's brutal. And that's what avocado tastes like. Does no. it? To me, it no, does. Absolutely. No. I hate Thrills gum. Love avocado avocados. basically has no smell, and it doesn't taste bad. It does it, taste bad, but it, I guess it depends on where they the don't right leave it to rot in vinegar. Oh, <laughs> they don't leave it to rot in vinegar. They don't pickle it, damn it. <laughs> so that should be a point for me because they don't pickle avocado. I always pick pickles, but, to be just like you. Know. Really? You don't like pickles? I hate pickles. You're fucking strange. Pickle, what, what, what is Take absolutely apparent, though, is that I totally missed the spirit of this question. <laughs> <laughs> it's pickled eggs. Yeah, pickled eggs. Yeah, that's what it tastes like. Yeah, that's what it tastes like. Yeah, that's what it tastes like. Okay, that should be a point to both of us. Well, no, I was admit like, it. When I when I asked it, I asked it more for his answer. Avocado is fucking terrible. Oh my god! All right, it is terrible. Avocado. You so- mix it up to make this fucking guacamole <laughs> shit that looks like basically fucking chunky. I can't believe it's cottage it's cheese that's gone wrong. It's the same texture. It's a wonderful tradition of the Mexican people. Fuck <laughs> the Mexican people. <laughs> And I have nothing against the Mexican people, and, but it's fucking terrible. Now they brought us a lot of good things. Tradition of the curling club. I, the yes. Curling club and whoever pickled eggs shit. are a staple of every fucking pub you've ever been in. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Every gross. Mexican restaurant serves guacamole. They charge an extra dollar for it. Yes, and I also get the shits and shit it out in twenty minutes after it. That doesn't make it good. All right. All right? It better. No. Than it's, fucking it's, pickled eggs and pickled eggs should be it banned. Is, it looks <laughs> like it's gone bad. It's fucking terrible consistency. Uh-huh. It's like fucking play doh. It's just fucking terrible. The only thing is, it's delicious. But I will say. Kevin has totally lost the fucking mark on this question. Uh, well, I'm gonna give him credit for his answer. No, I thought, I thought he credit. actually gave it a, a good. It, w- it wasn't necessarily now, like a joke willing, question. He admitted he missed the spirit of the call. He did but admit it. Question. He should maybe get an X for that. He should get an X for that. Uh, because sure. if I get a fucking X for fucking saying that it looks like shit, I, apparently I, it's not important what your fucking food looks like, which doesn't make any sense to me. Well, because every I, single fucking one of you have gone into a fucking. You've gone into a supermarket and you've bought that hey. fruit that looks good and not the fruit that looks uh, like shit. No, I haven't done and you that. don't eat the orange peel, so don't I give me that shit. I smell, man. I smell my food and pickled eggs smell like a <laughs> like dirty dung came out of a monkey or so. I don't know what happened to that smell, but it is But terrible. pickled eggs, yes, I will concede pickled eggs do smell bad, but they taste fucking delicious. And come on, Kevin, you can agree with me on this one. They are oh, yeah. fucking like delicious. I said earlier, mana from and, heaven. Oh, they really are fucking. And I will give them that. But one thing we can all say is, every single one of us can live without fucking avocado. It is fucking terrible. I, I love avocado. I love it. Um, what avocado? You know, with you are avocado. fucking pro Mexican, sir. Yeah. And I'm getting tired yeah. of your argument. Sometimes you know you get a Mexican burger. You know you get a little uh, you know avocado guacamole on there. You get a little you know you put it on a fucking like burger. Little, Why like, don't you go get fucking white paste from a school? 
child. No, it's like on. a little salsa It's the same burger. fucking thing. Yeah, it's awesome. Salsa burger? Yeah, you, you ban avocado. You ban let, let, guacamole. Just and that's fine. No, yeah, right. And then, then California right. right. vault. Just a question. Well, that's all, true. All, all <laughs> the time, like, how versatile is a, is pickled eggs? Like, what, what is the use? How does it need to be fucking versatile? It's you not. eat it's it. in a pub when people are drunk. That's the only time they can get people to fucking eat it. It's are you gross. kidding me? Have you gone to Costco? They got the I fucking know. kegger here's, there. Here's how good pickled eggs are. Very. We had eggs left over in our fridge before we left for Disney World. And I thought, holy shit. These will be fucking ready when I get home. Because it's always the worst. Waiting for yeah, pickled eggs Yeah, waiting for pickled eggs, done. yeah. I went Throw to Disney World, all I could think about was pickled eggs. Because they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are doing history movies and he's thinking about pickled eggs. I, 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 well. <laughs> if, <laughs> I, if you, if you want to go on who is more fucking passionate about pickled eggs, <laughs> I think maybe you are. <laughs> okay. I like it. I got to give it to Jeff. I, I didn't so think, too. I thought I was going to give it to Jeff. I think so too, no, I agree. Fuck Jeff. Um, okay. I had to come swinging. I was coming swinging after that. The problem is, is all three of us are tied now. This is a three-way tie. So ah, three-way. So, and I, my speed round is set up for only two of you. So we have well, to eliminate that's somebody. So, so what are we going to do? Uh, do Josh Straws, or what are we going to do? No, we're going to have somebody's going to have to face off for the right to face somebody else. So, uh, all right. So, out of the three of us, who was the strongest debater? Do you believe? Um. Well, Jeff. Because that guy should be locked in. Jeff right? took two rounds by himself without yeah. without splitting the round. So he's probably all my points are split. Uh, all of Kevin's are split, yeah. and I have one. You have one by yourself. So I think it's gonna have. You're gonna have to debate the movie round between the two of you. The winner of that will have to face Jeff. I like it. But they will be a point up on you. Whoever wins it will be a point up on you okay. going through the next five Fine, rounds. I'm willing to take that. That's interesting. That's, that's okay. Interesting. That's a that's a twist. Yeah. What a twist! It's a twist. So you so you get the buy. I get a buy. I get, oh, I get a buy, but I'm down. Okay, move into the speed round. So uh, yeah, you get to keep playing. To summarize, we're three apiece. Move into Jody and Kevin on a uh, on a tie break. All right. So movies. All right. This is a yes or no question. One of you will be yes, one of you no. Whoever says it first gets, right. gets it. And we'll have to argue that first, whoever says it first. All right. The question is, was Total Recall a dream? Yes. Okay. Why? Okay. Where do I start? And which Total Recall are we talking about? Are we talking the original? No, no. The, the only one. Yeah, the only the, one. The good one. <laughs> the good one. The only thing that was good about the new one was Kate Beckinsale. Right. Let's, let's all be honest. There's nothing good about it. I don't care if Kate uh, Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale, Beckinsale oh, I, I will. Brutal. I would never kick out of my bed. I'm just telling you right now. Not one person. I watched oh, watch oh, another one. That's true. <laughs> and not a single probe was pulled out of a nose. <laughs> <laughs> Which, let's face it, that that alone is it. Yeah. Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> All right. We know he went to Total Recall or Recall, I, I guess it was remember. called. Right. Technically. All right. He went to Recall, sat down in the chair. Every, all the shit went down right after that. All right. He dreams about Mars and about essentially giving it an atmosphere, which is horseshit let's face it it's horseshit it's a, it's it's a dream okay we know it's a dream because of the fact that arnold schwarzenegger a is probably not capable of saving mars let's face it all right he's not all right he had a hard time putting a turban on his fucking head and pulling something out of his nose all yeah, right and he had to have mechanical assistance for that he couldn't do it himself all right let's face it well, all right you pull something out of your brain with your fingers uh, if I was fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger, I should be able to. All right, it's that simple. It's a fucking, it's a dream. All right, it has to be a dream. Everything that happens is just too coincidental that this guy, who is supposedly the normal Joe, right. can go through all of this, have all this training, all right away. Like, what are we, the fucking Matrix? Like, this is not. And the Matrix was essentially just a computerized dream. That's really what it was. Like, let's face yeah. it, it was a little bit deeper, obviously. Okay, right? but it's. Getting back to Total Recall, Total Recall was, he goes to Recall, all of a sudden he's now a fucking super agent, he can now kick the shit out of people, and before he was the guy who just could sit there and cut concrete with the fucking drill thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, jackhammer, whatever you want to so call it. So, your argument is that it's a dream because it's just too surreal, and too, too extraordinary. It's too extraordinary, and everything that happens is too coincidental, he's always saved, it's always the, the nick of time... The guy could not have this kind of luck. It just mm -hmm. can't happen. 
his fucking wife, who apparently has turned into somebody who could kick his fucking ass, like, she had a little fucking frame. There's no way she would be able to kick that guy's ass in real life, but yet she can do it. Like, she can whip him around like it's nothing. Like, the guy's got, what, probably 200 pounds on her easily? Like, he's whipping her around. Uh, he's ripping, uh, she's whipping him around just as much as he's whipping her around. And all this, so it just doesn't make any feasible sense for this to be actually real. It just. Everything starts from there. There's nothing that shows that he really wakes up. It's just, you know, this could be part of the dream. And realistically, we know he went to a place that was mind-fucking him. They know that they're going to import dreams into him. So why wouldn't it be a dream? Like, it's he, he travels to fucking Mars. He, he saves, a, you know, finds some machine that creates fucking an atmosphere because there's all the ice underneath. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, right. it's just... And and lot, and the, the three very, titty women. Like, let's face it. That's every man's dream. All mm-hmm. right? Three tits is... No, I only have two hands. You have a fucking mouth. What are you, wrong? Like, come on. You got to concede to that. It's, it's... That is a fucking... Come on, Jeff. Three tits, that's awesome. Hey. Let's face it. That's a good counterpart, man. <laughs> so, so at the end of Total Recall, you when she goes, or no, you know, he says it to her, right, to the girl. Yeah. He goes, uh, I just had a terrible thought. What if this is all a dream? Yep. And she goes, or whatever. She like, said something along the lines like, of, "Kiss me yeah. or yeah, or, just kiss me or kiss something me, like yeah. that." Yeah. yeah, ends like a typical movie, which is essentially uh, a, a a fiction. It's a fictional tale. That's in his head. I don't even know how to argue against that. I've never given it much thought because it never fucking dawned on me that it was a dream. You, why don't you think it's a dream? I, it never dawned on me that it was a dream. It didn't end. Typically, when movies end like a dream, they tell you it's a dream at the end. Mm-hmm. Someone wakes up. But I think that was the reason why we ended it like that is because it was supposed to give you that speculation of was it a dream, wasn't it a dream? I don't think there really truly is a right answer, but most of the evidence points to the fact that it is a dream. Do you think it, I got nothing? I it just never dawned on me. <clears throat> never dawned on me. I got I got to give it to Jody. I'm sorry. Um, I got no. Well, obviously, I've got no argument. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you gave it to him, I'd call bullshit. I, <laughs> I never believed it was, but now I do. So he had a better argument. Yeah. Three titted women, guys. Come but, on. But really, the Mars part doesn't kind of give it away. Like you said that, but yeah. All right. Seriously, like Mars. Yeah, like, what? like yeah, I can understand the traveling to Mars in the future thing. Yeah, that might happen. You know, it could happen, but I'll tell you right now, we're not going to find a fucking machine that's going to give it an atmosphere. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and if it did, you would have found something much more. You know, obviously they have well, like what is it, Kados or whatever the fucking guy's name is. Not every movie that is a little over the top is going to be a dream. Well, no, of course not. I mean, th- then all of science fiction is a dream. But that is essentially what science fiction is. Well, it's but too, that's it's too hard to start dreaming. Are you making an argument? Are you making an argument? You I've already not, fucking won. I don't know why he's arguing. That's all I got. He's already got. <laughs> all right, so we're coming down to Jeff and Jody now. Of course, Jody's up one for having hey. had to win the, the tiebreaker. All right, that might not help me. I'm just telling you right now. Okay, <laughs> Jeff's probably the hardest one I've ever played with these. Moving to television. This is another yes or no question. All right. Should there be any level of censorship on television? Yes. Why? Because it's available to the masses. We don't want our kids to see certain things. We don't want our kids to see mass rape. and a, like A show like Dexter, I wouldn't want my kids to watch. It's, it's not appropriate. It, there is a time and a place that kids are able to see that kind of stuff. And I think as parents, we, shouldn't, we should have the ability to restrict it. And yes, we can. Obviously, we can say, no, you're not going near the fucking television. But as, as people who have kids, and I don't think Jeff does, but... He, I'm sure he can agree to that to a degree that it is the it is the parent's responsibility, but I think the broadcasters have a responsibility as well, and I think that they have to show what is appropriate within certain time slots, and that's why we have premium channels. We have premium channels like AMC, stuff like that, where they will show that shit throughout the day, mm-hmm. right? HBO. HBO, perfect example. These are all cable subscriptions that are locked down that have parental controls on them, stuff like that. And I think that's important. And I think to make sure that we don't have, you know, five-year-olds accidentally coming across, you know, rape scenes, for instance, that would be something that is definitely a little premature. <laughs> Fair <laughs> so enough. I think it has to be. Jeff, why, why shouldn't there be any censorship on television? Uh, there shouldn't be any censorship on television. I mean, it depends. It's kind of a loose question because... It is. Um, you know, censorship, you know, can come in all forms. It depends on what, like, programming you're talking about, but... All programming. <laughs> all programming? 
I mean, that's like saying, like, okay, you're watching a sports program and the guy's, uh, you know, you know, throat gets sliced by a skate. You know, you can't censor that right away. It's like... It, well, there's oh, a 10 second delay on all live media. Okay, right? but fair enough. Get rid of that too. That's what you. But you would have to get rid of that in that scenario. You're saying like just yeah, like get like make it Hunger Games, basically. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's not what I'm saying. That's what you have to say. That's if you what want, the if question you want, is. If you the question want is point. eliminate everything that history has told us, and any know, level, <laughs> and pickled eggs. Fuck those pickled eggs. <laughs> I'm supposed to be out here. <laughs> don't get don't don't drag me. All right. Well, I just want to say <laughs> censorship. Uh, you know, if you can't eliminate it from everything, but if you were to eliminate it, you already it already has happened. It's already starting to happen. You know, you look at like he's saying, like with HBO, Showtime, censor, there's no censorship on those channels. Nope. You know, they are not really no. censorless channels. Should they be across the board? I don't think so. But on those channels, yeah, absolutely. It's either a yes or a no. Right? It's a yes or a no, and he's supposed to be no. But the no, it, you know, what are you talking? The no, that is such a stupid question. No. You should have said, <laughs> should have said yes first. <laughs> No, because I'm he's kind of got you on I'm that not one. Argue, you know, like kids should be watching like Eyes Wide Shut at twelve o'clock noon. You know, it's not something <laughs> no. they should be seeing. You know, and for the record, I don't think they should ever watch that fucking movie, no matter what <laughs> age you are. <laughs> nothing to do what with the time day. It has nothing to do with it. It's just a terrible fucking Kubrick movie. Yes, it terrible is. movie. All right, well, you're it's worse than Dora the Explorer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Kevin, you have to agree with me. Jody made his argument better. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I also had the advantage on that one. I clearly uh, yeah, conceded. being right. That's why it's a you speed round. Right. And there's an That's advantage. There's an advantage to answering first. There sure is. All there's right. an advantage to answering the right answer first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. apparently. Jody takes the point. All right. All right, you're done too, Jeff. That's okay. <laughs> Jeff also has history of music, which is usually better. Still four to go, so you know, anything can happen. Going on to music. He'll probably. Do you actually have a question where it has something to do with music that you know about, though? <laughs> Certainly not Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> Ask us what's one the of the most famous bands ever. <laughs> I think the speed's going to matter to this one, so okay. I want to make sure I get this out. All right. Music. Which Burlington, Ontario band is better? Finger 11 Finger or 11. Walk Off the Earth? Finger 11, easily. Finger 11. I'm just going to concede that. <laughs> well, that was like my Deep Space Nine question. question. I knew where he was going. Once he said Burlington, I was like, finger up. Yeah, you're, there's only like four possibilities there, and you didn't pick any of the ones I would have picked, uh, except for... I know, just between those two. Finger 11 or Walk Off the Earth. You don't want to argue Walk Off the Earth? Okay. He wasn't going to go with Silverstein. Honestly, I could make a better argument for Walk Off the Earth if I pulled down my pants and put my balls right on the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> But I'm not going to. I'm just going to concede it straight Thank to you. Jeff. All right, because there's no way I can argue yeah, that. It's the right answer. It is the right answer. Jeff wins the point. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. If you do that, you. you win. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no point in wasting 20 minutes to debate something that a I don't know and fuck Dave. all about and, and b it's not the right fucking answer. <laughs> well, it wasn't the best. And just between those two, who's better? Yeah. You so. won't win, and Dave will have to buy a new recorder. So you lose, lose. <laughs> Okay, I don't know. Uh, you might like that. Jeff's back in this. <laughs> it's like pickle. All right, um, sports. Do the Pan Am games matter? Yes. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you, you both just got, about as much. As you both got what you wanted there. So, Jody, you said first. So you. The Pan Am games are very important from a local aspect. It is going to generate a massive amount of revenue for a local business. It is a way to showcase athletes that would normally not be showcased. It is a way of making sure that Hamilton, even though personally it's not going to affect us as much, but Hamilton is going to get these games and they're going to get to showcase some of the future athletes that are coming up as well as some that are already here that would normally never get that spotlight. And I think it's a very great opportunity for anybody that's involved to showcase their talents to try to make um you know make a case for themselves and i'm pretty sure that when you do fairly well in the pan am games you're probably going to get you know a little bit more opportunities from that i think i think it's a win-win for everybody yes they are going to spend money on it and yes is it as important as like a fucking olympics absolutely but hamilton's never getting an olympics (laughs) so we know that that's not going to happen isn't the pan am games Toronto? 
Well, it's uh, Toronto it's and Hamilton. Are Toronto and sure. Hamilton are sharing it's like the, the venues. It's like the whole fucking region from Toronto all the way to San Francisco. I, I don't think Burlington can have anything, though, do they? We don't have any venues. We don't have, we don't have, any we don't have anything to do. We don't get anything in this town. We don't get a, a cocky team. We don't get shit in this town because we're apparently... We have walk off the earth. We have walk off the earth. <laughs> we have walk off the earth. It's fantastic. We're done. Uh, either way, I, I think it's it's beneficial for local business. I think for the athletes, it's very important. I think for a lot of the spectators, I'm going to watch some of the events. So for the record, the Pan Am Games are basically like a Summer Olympics, but it only includes North America, South America, and the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's essentially this. Uh, the, the Americas. Uh, the Americas, yeah. 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 Why don't the Pan Am Games matter, Jeff? Because it doesn't fucking matter whatsoever. It doesn't matter because... Who gives a shit? Who cares who's the best between Mexico and Uruguay? No one! <laughs> <laughs> but Mexico gave you Guatemala, guacamole. <laughs> I'm just saying, we're watching runners. It's amazing how quick you've turned on the Mexican people. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, I'm watching badminton. I want a ping pong. I don't want to. I want to watch a fucking. Best. So what you're I saying is I want to that... watch China play ping pong. I don't want to watch Japan. I don't give a shit. I don't want to watch. Have you ever seen those Chinese ping pong fucking games? They are fucking crazy. Yeah, I don't get to watch it. Guess why? Because it's Pan Am games. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I wonder if watch... I wonder if they pickled eggs. They probably would because it's near because it's the fucking Pan Am games. Right? Jeff has yeah, really come alive here in the last couple. <laughs> he is, but he's got no fucking case, and he knows it. What? No fucking case? Who cares? Do you watch the Pan Am games when it's? Do you not think Hamilton? that your whole argument was the fact that it's here? I've actually watched the Pan Am <laughs> in games. In general, this is a general question, not just if it's here. Do the Pan Am games matter? Yeah, they do. They don't fucking matter at all. You have no argument other than the fact that it's here. You like <laughs> fucking baseball. Your I argument know, is invalid. Now switching the topic. <laughs> and who's, the, who, who's the, you know, deflecting. <laughs> <laughs> deflecting. I like that. Fouling off. Why don't they matter, Jeff? They don't fuck. I just told you. Who cares who wins in ping pong between America versus fucking Brazil? Nobody. Nobody cares. I think the Brazilian people do. What else do. is in the Pan Am games? Fuck, I think there's rowing. Canada is going to win rugby. that for a fucking jump yeah, compared rugby. to the Europeans. The, uh, the Europeans are the best Soccer. at uh, a whole bunch of Soccer. sports. Uh, Asians are all about, you know, like... A lot Soccer, of bicycle seriously? Yeah. But, like, like... That's not even fucking a contest. You're so, dancing, sir. Brazil, Give me the no, damn point. No, no. Brazil is like the only country that is even any good. You know? It's not even fucking... Well, who cares? It's on TV. Do you really give a shit? <laughs> I'll Do you watch really some care? Of it. Yeah. You watch them. You I don't watched, care. Do you matter is the question. Regardless you know? of whether it's in Hamilton or not, I have watched the Pan Am Games. For what? Not all of it, but I have watched some Do of it. Do you care? Do you care? Do you tune in for the opening ceremonies? Yeah. Okay. That doesn't fuck it. The opening ceremonies is when they fucking play some music. And well, they go, well, here's this country. And like, it's well, that, that's part of it. It's that about around. a tenth. Not no, a hundredth of the importance of the Olympics. No, no, I would no, I would go further. A thousandth of the importance. It really does not matter. It's not. Whatsoever. Pan Am is not a global scale. The only, per, the only people it fucking matters to. I'll tell you this: are the sponsors, the people that are in it, and the fucking athletes. Like, so it does matter then. It only matters to those people. It, it matters. There you go. It, I win. If it matters, <laughs> if, if it's on TV, like do that. Do people are, are, are like, oh, I'm gonna watch. I'll that. tell you right if now that Rogers space. is planning on covering it on three of their channels. If it, oh, good for Rogers because they have the rights. <laughs> but the thing is, if in the states, will they watch it? No. In Canada, I'm not gonna fucking the watch it because I don't care. But that's why I would argue it because it doesn't fucking matter to me whatsoever. Where were the last Pan Am Games? Last Pan Am Games were in. Ooh, where were they? They were in... It was an American city. Do you know what? I don't know because I didn't I fucking watch I can't remember them. the <laughs> actual city. The last Pan Am was in America, though. It was in the U.S. Okay. Uh, I would like to fact check that shit. Swap. Fact, fact check, check that? I, fact I check can't that. remember. I cannot remember. I don't think they were in the states, and even I if think they, they were, in the states. Especially the Pan Am Games do every four years. Like, yeah, they're every four see, years. I don't even know how often. Years. See, he doesn't know because they don't fucking matter. You know where the last fucking Summer Olympics were, don't you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I just, have, can I just have this point now? Were, or what are we oh, doing? Yeah, they were, yeah, everyone watches the Olympics. Yeah, yeah exactly. Does not everyone, the summer, I don't Does anyone all. care summer about the damn Pan Am? Well, well, we're not as good at it, so we don't care as they much. They don't matter. That's, no, that's exactly nothing to it. <laughs> not for me, I just, I don't care. They don't, they don't have the world's best. They are just, you know what they are? They're like, they're like a, like a soft Olympics. They're like, hey, come, come practice. They're practice events. That's what the Pan Am He's digging. Is. I'm digging. You're digging. You're, you're just worried that I'm going to get this point. I'm, I'm definitely going to get this point. 
because they don't fucking matter. Uh, Stupid Wikipedia. Oh, they were in Toronto. No, that's the next. We're just talking about this side of the world on all sports. Oh, they the were not in the states. Where oh, were they last? Guadalajara, Mexico. Oh, got back to those fucking Mexicans. Uh, then. Yeah. <laughs> the Mexicans you don't fucking like. Yeah, exactly. Dylan's crying. A bit. Do you think they gave a shit in Mexico? I bet you they didn't. You know, like. Uh, well, maybe in Mexico. There's maybe in Guadalajara. Not a lot in Mexico. Maybe, I'm just saying, like, they're like. Do you think someone in Calgary's gonna fucking throw this on and go? Yeah, that's what's. Do the Americans care about this, this at all? Not think? at all. What? So, who do you think made the better argument here? It's tough. It's tough. Um, Jody made the argument that it, it matters to the athletes and that they, it's kind of a stepping stone to, mm-hmm. and that and uh, to, to better things, and that's a compelling argument. But as far as if we're, if we're if we're going on viewership and whether the population cares about it, then Jeff made a better argument because nobody gives a flying fuck. <laughs> Giving it to Jeff. It's a fuck. Are no. you it's fucking a, kidding me? It's a strong <laughs> fuck no. All You're right. fucking kidding me. I gotta give it to Jeff. We're tied. I'm still, I'm still down one. What the fuck nope. are you talking about? You oh, tied right. it up. Oh, have I? Oh. Two, to, two rounds to go. And just for the record, the last Pan Am Games, profit of $70 million. Yeah, dude. For Guadalajara, Mexico. For fucking Mexico. Think about that. That's a lot of fucking pesos, sir. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking... Good exchange. Okay. I can't fucking believe it. You gave it to him. <laughs> All right, we're going... We're... This is bullshit. <laughs> Cares about the damn Pan Am game. I will fucking cut you both. <laughs> Alright. Anyway. You're right out of this. It's tied. Fucking history's next. He's history. a fucking history major. I lost, lost history. Last I lost one. history. Oh, yeah. Don't forget wild card. It's going to be good. Alright. <laughs> oh, God. God knows what oh, fucking it's, up. it's going to be good, guys. <laughs> I'm still up by one, though, am I not? No, you're tied. How am I tied? <laughs> the wild card oh, yeah, is going to be is is electricity, electricity and invention. <laughs> 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 I wasn't here to hey, listen to that. With, an electri- with that electricity, <laughs> with that electricity, he can listen to his collection of Led Zeppelin albums okay. that he doesn't have because he doesn't know who the fuck they are. No, but, but you know, you can see that musical. You should have argued Walk Off the Earth. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Walk Off the Earth is even more useless than the Pan Am Games. Uh, it is useless. It's more useless. <laughs> okay, okay, let me, I gotta make composure so I can read this question. You have no composure, sir. Alright. Uh, history. The question is Who will history judge more harshly, Palestine or Israel? Oh, Israel. Why? Well, oh, fuck. Israel, you know, went in it and just completely demolished people's houses, completely treated them un- uh, the Palestinian population unfairly, have con- continued to do so, labeled them as extremists, which I will you know, argue that they, they definitely have done uh, as far as retaliation, but you don't hear about what Israel has done to Palestine because they don't own media. And you know, if you're talking about who's treated more unfairly, it's by far Palestinians. Way more Palestinians have been killed than Israelis. Um, it's... It's not even a comparison. They the human rights uh, violations that have come, you know, come down on Palestinians uh, from <clears throat> Israeli conduct. They've, you know, they, they it's a war zone constantly for them. They live in a war zone. They 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 basically have no water, no food. They you know they live at like you know twenty people to a house. Then all of a sudden, boom! They get told their land's being taken, and a bulldozer comes comes by and destroys their house. They get told to move. It's not even. I, I could go on for hours about this, but this isn't even fair. Like, okay, but you're, we're, the question is kind of in the in the jest of like five centuries from now, when they're looking back on this or whenever in the in the, in the distant. I'll sum this right up. History loves the underdog. That is Palestine. Plain okay. Simple. Israeli forces way larger, way larger. One of the greatest air forces in the world is actually Israel. Mm-hmm. Uh, history loves the underdog. History loves. The abusee, all right. The Jews. Do we think of Nazis more, or do we think of the Jews? Nazis. No, I think of the Jews. No, I, f- I, I think with the Jews, I sympathize. But when you, think of the Nazis but when you <laughs> I play more games based on Nazis. I'll give you that. However, <laughs> and when something is a, bullshit, you know, what is this Nazi Holocaust Germany survivor? <laughs> <laughs> 
Past that, I'm fairly ignorant to this. Mm -hmm. All right, I will concede to that. Okay, and you are a history major. I am not. I studied this topic specifically because However, I, 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 I have some time. Time. bias. I live with the Palestinians. Yeah, so. but if we're talking five centuries from now, when we look back at the history of this and however this is going to end up folding out, which let's face it, it's not going to go well for Israel eventually. We all know it. You feel like the Arab world, the Arab Muslim world is world. not going to it is it's. It, it's going to be fucked, okay? It's, yeah. And I think at the end of the day, people are going to look back at Israel as being, that's the fucking country that fucked it up. Yeah. Palestine is the country that is going to end up being victorious. They are going to be the heroes, and they are going to be the ones that are going to be looked forever as the people who were oppressed and the people who rose up and conquered. Look at Russia, for instance, in World War Two. Same thing. Rushed up, conquered, right? And we look back at we don't look back at the Russians as being the guys who were sympathizers to the Nazis at the beginning of the war. We think of how they fucking fought them at the end, and it's the exact same thing that you have with Palestine. Yeah, you could look at with you know with Israel, like what's the exact question again? Who is history going to judge more harshly? So basically, who has made more mistakes in this peace process? So he's had to argue Palestine. Yeah, he's I have to argue Palestine, and I think that Palestine is going to be looked at. It's going to be more critiqued because they're going to try to figure out what the fuck they did wrong, and it's going to be it's going to be a very harsh lesson learned. And you know, five centuries from now, we're going to look back at that. We're going to say, well, what did they do to make this work? And they didn't. They didn't do anything, and neither did Israel really. So well, I can't argue either one because I think both of them are going to be. Bullshit. I think Palestine has done more as far as actually. Um, reached out the hand and say, let's start this, and Israel constantly says no. Um, True. When Israel came in and the initial steps of this, <coughs> Israel found excuses to just take more and more land. Originally, they were, Palestine was supposed to have way more land, and it went to a seven-day war, a war for seven days. Yeah. And then it was a bullshit took argument double to begin it. with, though. It was, but Israel, it really is. Israel is going to be the one that... But is it, because, is it because of the the harshness of the Palestine people who refuse to give up or is it the Israel uh, Israelis who want to essentially conquer that's really what it is right it's it's conquer versus pig headed it's both what, what you just said yep I think it's both I don't think there's really the right answer on this one but if I had to concede an answer I think it's still going to be Israel even though I don't want to argue that I don't even understand well, what either of them is arguing anymore well, I think, I think Jody's conceded. To me. I'm going to have to concede because yeah. realistically, Israel is going to be the more harsher one at the end of this because they're the dicks. I they really the are the dicks. Was, of the I team. think the mistake was the Allies fucking putting Israel where it is. Yep. After World War Two, yep. you know yep. what? If we, wanted, if we problem. wanted Israel to have their own land, yep. that was <coughs> okay. That was, uh, so the last one is going to so save never me. happen again. We should have given them some you need, of our land. You need this to tie. Yep. And then okay. what are you going to do there, big guy? I don't know. We're going to have to figure something We're out. We're going to fucking tie this shit just for fun. Okay. Just so we can see what this fucker's going to do. Sure. Moving on to the next one. The last and final speed round question. This is the wild card. Yeah. Plain condom or flavored condom? Plain. Who the fuck wants to suck on a condom? <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> fuck you. Come up with another question. No, I want to hear this. <laughs> No, that is the fucking answer, and he knows it too. Who the fuck wants to suck on a condom? Who gives a shit? Well, first of all, when am I sucking Why would it matter to a table full of guys? <laughs> yeah, like, Nobody's who's tasting still... it? Like, I don't think that... I was, like, I was expecting <laughs> something crazy to come out. Like, I'm, assen I'm essentially married, and I haven't used a condom in years, but... When I did use condoms, I certainly didn't say, hey, baby, it's fucking cherry suck on it. Yeah. Like, there's no reason... Or, or uh, you know what, if, if we're not gonna... I'm just gonna eat. Yeah, like, like if we're not gonna here, you want a condom? It's like a breath mint. Like, Who's what the fuck? Fuck? condom? Exactly. That's a fucking stupid, ridiculous question, and I've won it just because I was the one that said fucking... You don't want to argue flavored condom? Who the, the fuck would argue it? <laughs> Chicks don't want to put latex in their mouth. That's like saying... Doesn't matter. Unused maxi like. pad or used maxi pad? Which one's better to taste? <laughs> what are you fucking retarded? They're both bad. <laughs> <laughs> which, which pile of shit tastes? Which pile of shit smells worse? Like, I'm sorry, but that's fucking horse shit. I'm and I'm saying, in it. 
I'm facing you. I've tied the game on a horseshit I question. I wanted that. Bad. That is a horseshit <laughs> fucking okay. question. And honestly, if I was if I was Jeff, I'd be pissed off right now. All right, if we're gonna. I would have argued tie, safe gotta... sex. You shouldn't be giving. Oh, this guy has a tie question. For you have a tie question. Tie question. Yeah. I already mentioned it. And I don't oh, know right. if anybody. Better not be history. What is the worst fourth movie in a series? There's many to choose. I can't believe you didn't argue. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I got mine. I got mine. Right, Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh, that is definitely a good pick. Yep. Okay. Do you have yours, or you would wait till he answers? I'm debating over two right now. Okay. So you why don't you let him start? Yeah, fuck. That movie is fucking terrible. It is fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. That movie, what, first of all, has Shia LaBeouf in it. Number one reason it's terrible. <laughs> number two, it looks nothing like a, a fucking Indiana Jones movie. It looks like something oh, that was shot. Hell. It was shot in like Steven Spielberg's backyard is what that fucking movie looks like. They fucking try to make us believe fucking Indiana Jones would survive a nuclear blast by fucking closing a fucking fridge and door in time? Hey, that was a lead fridge. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. That fucking gopher pops up. He's like, ugh. Not only did the gopher oh, pop up once, they popped up three fucking times in that movie. And I'm arguing for him in this that case. That is a terrible fucking terrible. movie. They fucking kill a guy with fucking ants. With ants. <laughs> they fucking kill a guy. Oh, my God. Well, I can't even remember all this movie. I'm trying to go back on the shit. Oh, yeah. His best friend who ends up being a double agent, then a triple agent. And then they get to the fucking end and there's, like, fucking aliens. <laughs> aliens. <laughs> aliens and Indiana Jones. You fucking... I got... I can accept Ark of the Covenant and fucking Holy Grail, but aliens? Yeah, there no. was like there was mysticism in those ones. There was some sort. Of, there was some history. There was, there was like, magic, basically. Well, but history doesn't matter. Yeah, history uh, fucking. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> we proved that it does. Matter is a strong word. <laughs> does this movie matter? Fuck no. I don't even include it in the fucking Indiana Jones trilogy because that's a trilogy. It's actually three well, good. Movies. Hollywood has really lost what the term trilogy means. Have you noticed? Yeah, they, they split really the have. part three into two movies. Like, oh, that's just a fucking like the worst. fucking they're Hobbit movies. That, they're doing that with Avengers, and it's going to be a goddamn train wreck. Hunger Games, yeah. too. Hunger Games, yeah. and that, and and we we'll hate when they do that. All right, right. the vampire one. I have my oh, pick. Twilight. Twilight. I have my pick. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, you can pick. Are we good? What's, yeah. your, what's the worst fourth movie? All right, this is going to be an easy one. Police Academy Four. <laughs> Academy 4. It is terrible. Right out of left field. Holy shit. Terrible movie. Terrible okay. fucking movie. I'm and not, not a single person. Which at one this is table. that again? Citizens on Patrol. <laughs> terrible fucking movie. Terrible movie. <laughs> Even if you see that come up on TV, you will not fucking watch it. There's not a single person at this table that can cite a single line from that movie. No. Well, I, no. I'm not familiar with it, so can you tell me what happens in it that's so bad? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> And you know why? Because everybody at this table has seen the fourth fucking Indiana Jones movie, but not a single fucking one has sat through that piece thing. of shit Fair because enough. it was fucking terrible. But, like, you could say the same thing about, like, uh, maybe Fast and the Furious 4. Or uh, no, that was a good movie. Okay. Um, uh, which one was that? <laughs> Tokyo Drift. That one sucks. What? Yeah, it was still better That's than... That's the third one. It was still better than fucking Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh, that one was the third one. No, right? I think he's right, maybe. That is the third it one. It is the fourth one. Because mm. um, you have Fast and the Furious, then you have... Too Fast, Too, too, fast, too Furious, and then you have... Oh, yeah, you I think it's right. Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift 3. Oh, you know what? Fast and Furious is actually the fourth one. Yes. You're right. Yes. Yes. The third one is Tokyo Drift. Okay, or even like you could argue Phantom Menace. Uh, or, he's arguing police uh, again. Phantom Menace you know is still better though than Crystal Skull. You know what That's I would have argued in this? Rambo. Rambo Four. Rambo. Uh, Rambo Four was pretty terrible. Like no, even but the you people, know what was more terrible? Making it. What's you know what was more Rocky, terrible? Rocky Five or what? No, what's the bad Rocky movie? I don't There's remember. Rocky Four is good. It's but Rambo, yeah, Rambo, yeah, even the people making it knew it was terrible. That's why they put it out of its misery. Didn't you say you hated Star Trek minutes. 4 earlier? It's 49 Star Trek minutes long. Sure. It's not even a full length movie, Rambo. Star Trek 4 is the one. Yeah. Star Trek 4 is the one with the fucking whale, right? Yeah, yeah that's horse shit. Oh, it's still not as bad as fucking Crystal Skull, though. I'll give them that. <laughs> but that I, I will watch. Star Trek 4, if it comes on TV. I won't bother to put it in on the DVD that I have. I, it probably has never been played. Okay. I can be honest. However, I will tell you, there's not a single person at this table that owns Police Academy 4. No one's fucking watched sure. it. No one knows anything about it because it's so fucking terrible. 
Terrible. So that it has a ro- it has a Rotten Tomatoes review of probably the lowest of all of them. <laughs> and I think the last time I saw Rotten Tomatoes, it was like something like ninety eight percent rotten. It was like terrible. It was like one of the worst movies <laughs> ever made. Okay. They went a different way. Well, now now I'm now I'm starting to, to reconsider. I was about to give it to Jeff, but I'm you like, you shouldn't give it to Jeff. Do you I'm, know why? why? Because you've watched that fucking movie, but you haven't watched Police Academy four. <laughs> well, I only watched that movie because that's like saying I'm gonna give it to fucking Kevin because I know what Tool is, but I don't know what fucking Led Zeppelin is. Like, come on. No, I'm, that's well, in my defense, he didn't know either. What's up? He didn't know either. No, yeah, <laughs> no he knew who Tool was, but well, he didn't know who. Well, just just because I I don't even know what happens in this movie that makes it bad. He gave he gave he cited. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a quick summary plot summary of the movie. Okay, you have the same <laughs> cast that was in all the other movies, minus about half of them. Okay, so you still got, like, Steve Gutenberg, which is fucking terrible anyway, but you have him, you still got, like, the guy that makes the fucking sounds with the mouth, you still got, like, the big chit- so titty chit. So most of the main cast. Uh, about half, okay? okay? The other half were smart enough to go on to the things. <laughs> they read the script. Yeah, they read the script <laughs> and they went, what is this horse shit? Because we thought three was the worst, but it turns out four is worse, okay? Mm-hmm. And what they did is it's basically, think of it as a hour and a half movie about a co-op program. Because that's really what it is. It's, I fucking do remember this. Do you remember? It? It's seen fucking it. oh, terrible. It's oh, it's fucking terrible. And what it is is it's 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 basically ninety minutes of ride-alongs. That's what it is. Ride-alongs. In set in this universe, this yeah, they're training new recruits. They're training like yeah, yeah. they're training like the general population. It's fucking god awful. Like but I will tell you right now, I've seen Crystal Skull, and I would watch it again before I watched a fucking nether one of that piece of shit. Which makes it the worst, the worst fourth movie out of the two. Uh, and he said it himself. He doesn't even consider it as part of the trilogy. Which it technically isn't, but it's not. Well, it's not a trilogy. It's either. part of the. It's part of the universe, though. It is made by the same. <laughs> the expanded universe, that, might I add, of Indiana Jones. Oh, I, I, yeah, I got rid of that movie the same way I got rid of Enterprise. I hate, <laughs> it. hate them both. Yeah, it's brutal. Enterprise. <laughs> All right. Uh, any opinion before I make my ruling? I don't know who made a better argument. I know what movie I hate more. But I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't really know who, who well, made you, a better I, argument. Somebody who's seen both. Which one is worse? I it's how you rate it. It's you know? that, it's how you rate it. They're two different ways. Um, they really Indiana are. Jones is worse because it's it the takes, worst of the four movies. It takes a beloved series and fucking shits, <laughs> shits on it. all over mm-hmm. it. But the first Police Citizens. Academy movie was beloved. It was a great movie. Yeah, but then it, it, was, it. it was downhill. And then it was that. shit after that. But arguably, that never nowhere should, near. The, it never should have got to a fourth movie, movie, probably anyway. Dude, it got it to a sixth movie. It should have gone to like a third. movie. Okay. Well, then I should have picked <laughs> Resident Evil. But I, but I don't... Because <laughs> <laughs> Kevin didn't even know there was five of them. Yeah. Not at all. No. You should have picked Resident Evil 4. I, fucking I don't even know which one Resident Evil it fucking 4 that, is. That's probably a better or argument. Saw 4. <laughs> I never saw any of the Saw movies. I thought they were all terrible. Yeah. They, yeah, they man, just looked terrible. Saw just looked terrible. Shitty. Which movie do you hate more? That one. Indiana Jones. But that's only because he's seen it more and it's a beloved franchise. Actually, tonight. I haven't seen it more. Really? I didn't even see the whole thing. I fell asleep because it was... Oh, you missed the worst part of that movie then. Shit. Okay. The third I act is the worst part of the entire part. movie. There's a part in Indiana Jones where fucking Indiana Jones gets on fucking Shia LaBeouf's motorcycle yeah. and gets on the back is holding on to yeah. fucking Shia LaBeouf. I fell asleep, woke up at the end, Ashley goes, you Shia fell asleep. Shit I said, I'm not going to watch that again. And she goes, yeah, that's a good move. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> It was a terrible movie. I will concede to that, but... You, the question was, Citizens what the was the worst was fucking bad too. Fourth, fourth movie? And between those two movies, I would watch Indiana Jones any day over that fucking piece of shit. Any fucking day. And there's nobody at this table that would say that they'd rather watch Police Academy, let's face it. I wouldn't want to watch would. any of the Police Academies. Over Excellent, that proves my point. <laughs> I actually would. Really? I would rather watch that than I watch. Really? That fucking Indiana Jones movie just makes me oh, angry. so I can't terrible. Stand Police Academy in general. Like, I don't like any of it. But you're telling me that if that Indiana Jones movie is on TV and there's nothing else on, you wouldn't watch it. Like, Absolutely. I see, would I would. I would still it watch is it. It's dead to me. It doesn't exist. <laughs> just like 
Enterprise. I, <laughs> I, I guess they like fucking uh, exist to me. I hate it. I hate it so much. Oh my god, I hate it. Everything I hate about it Jeff hates everything eggs. about the fourth base cat movie was terrible. The plot was terrible. The characters were terrible. The fucking people that they brought in were fucking terrible. The budget was terrible. Everything about that movie is terrible. But it didn't kill the franchise, and this did. So I fucking hope so. I'm sorry. Was the fucking was the thing about was it was it had anything to do with the fucking franchise? This this one wasn't even written down. Was it anything to do with the franchise, (laughs) or was it just the the shittiest fourth movie? They want Chris Pratt as uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, that's fantastic. It didn't kill the franchise, did it? Do you see another fucking police academy movie coming the way? No, two more after that one. They all. They were like directed TV movies. It's like Revenge of the Nerds. They all. So they weren't really (laughs) theatrical releases or anything like that. This was a fucking theatrical. Lyric. It was Kevin's question, so I'm going to defer. I think to you Kevin. should let him. Uh, I think you should let him judge it. But yeah, I'm going to give it to Kevin. <sighs> but I'm so biased. I think so that's the problem. If if what, we what should look at bias. What movie do you think is worse? But I he hasn't seen I haven't one seen one. his movie. Okay, all right. Go off. That's like saying Revenge which, of the uh, fucking Police Academy one. What movie's worse? Yeah, but that's not a fair statement because the first Indiana Jones movie was phenomenal. Yeah, I know, but no, we're not arguing that. Okay. We're not arguing is I say as a whole, we'd say Indiana Jones is better than Police Academy as a franchise. Absolutely, okay. I would totally concede to that. Um, which one is which the, proves my which point? One is, which, which one is the bigger shit stain on their respective franchise? No, oh, well, that's not even a question. Well, <laughs> if we're if if that's how we're interpreting that's the question, the question I would give it to Jeff. Yes. That's how I interpret it. Is that how you want it interpreted? Kind of, yeah. That's All right, then. All right. Yeah. Jeff wins. Good job, Jeff. I don't know if he should, because he should almost get disqualified for not arguing flavored condom. But, you know, <laughs> Jeff That wins. is a bullshit <laughs> or, or, or picking Journey for the music question. Yeah, how dare yeah. I not pick How Journey. dare you pick such an obscure <laughs> musical <laughs> reference as Robert Plant? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck knows Robert Plant? But that guy from fucking Journey, he is family. You know, in fairness, they both dressed like girls and sang in rock bands. <laughs> true, true. Was that an that ending? Was an anyway, that's been uh, episode five. Uh, check us out on all our social media channels. Anyway, thank you everyone for uh, for joining us, and we'll <laughs> see you on the next episode of Trivial Dates. Uh, Kevin, would you like to uh, host one? Sometimes, sure. I think he should. I think, I think he should. I think he's due. Oh, so I think, uh, I think one of my good questions. The fucking <laughs> questions you're going to get from him are going to be insane. <laughs> <laughs> time. What would be good to debate and what people will come up with different answers? I would like some suggestions from the audience on things we should do. So, uh, I'm Dave Mater. Fucking sucks. Jeff Mater. I'm Jody. Kevin <laughs> 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 Thanks, everyone. Pick a leg. We'll see you next time. Pick a Go home. Go home. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I've already used that line. I like it.